So it's um, 6 p.m. according to our clock here in the room. I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, are there any adjustments at all to the agenda? No? No. Okay. Um, any public comment? Okay. Come on, okay. Mike. Somebody's got something. <laughs> Good job. You got something. Yeah. Good job. Okay. So, so that there. <laughs> I would make a, a motion that we approve the bills to the town. So All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes um, for the March 11th, 2019 Select Board meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I will sign and then pass it around. Sorry. Do we have enough Watch chairs? 24. How many people we got? 25th. Three. Oh, three. Three at the moment. Two oh, chairs. Four, yeah, thanks for reading it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like eight. I should know that they never did four or five times. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, oh. yep. uh, yeah. Before we. You like this, Brent? So. Brian, could you let Bob and sure. Kevin and Randy know we're, we're next on the list? Maybe um, if you'd like, just introduce yourselves for the for the camera, and um, and then we'll I'll open the floor to you guys. To okay, I'm uh, Bob Pope. I'm the uh, CEO of uh, Swenson Granite. Uh, Kevin Spaulding, Director of Manufacturing, at Swenson Granite. Randy Cleveland, Manager of Woodbury Quarry, Swenson Granite. Thank you. So I'm just going to open the floor to to you guys at first, and then you know, we have some questions. And well, we uh, uh, have always had such a good relationship with the Woodbury uh, mm -hmm. town structure that uh, you know, we wanted to keep you informed of what we're doing. Uh, we had applied for a, uh, a minor amendment to our Act 250 mm -hmm. permit. They told us they thought it was going to be a minor uh, mm -hmm. uh, amendment, so uh, we didn't think it was uh, much of a deal. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, in the scope of things, they've decided that they wanted to have a hearing mm -hmm. uh, just to make sure everybody had a chance to speak on it. And once it went to that level, we felt we should come and talk to you guys so you wouldn't be uh, caught by surprise or that you'd be uh, able to ask us questions before you arrived at a, at a hearing uh, mm -hmm. uh, where they might want you to chime in on anything. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we've always kind of done it that way, so that we know where we're where we're sitting with with the town before we we get to the hearings. Mm -hmm. And uh, so our project, as uh, we've laid out for Act 250, um, we'd like to expand the area that we are permitted to quarry in. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if any of you uh, remember back when it when it uh, first came to be why we had a. Um, a restriction on on what areas we could quarry up there and it really had to do with uh, uh, the use of torches in the cutting process to free up the granite and they were extremely loud mm -hmm. and uh, as many of the neighbors would say they were very annoying mm -hmm. kind of a dull roar um, and so at that time when we were getting the original permit uh, um, they put restrictions uh, in the permit so that the noise would be deadened by either foliage or a granite berm and they didn't want us to go certain directions mm -hmm. because that would open be a more open noise corridor to neighbors down the Cabot Road or, or whatever so 
we had, we've always kind of carried this foot original footprint mm -hmm. moniker in our in our permits that you know we're only going to quarry where we've always quarried uh, traditionally. Uh, what's happened over time is that technology, as far as how we get the granite out of there, has changed quite a bit. Um, we got rid of the burners and, and uh, brought in uh, pneumatic drills, which was quite an improvement, but still somewhat noisy. And then in the last decade, uh, the technology has really switched over to diamond wire sawing, which is uh, virtually silent almost once it's, once it's going. We still have to drill a hole to put the wire mm -hmm. down through each direction. But once they're up and uh, operating, you can have three or four wire saws running at once and stand right there and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, two, three, two and a half years ago when we applied to expand the production out of the quarry, uh, they, they were quite surprised at some of the sound levels we were permitted to have. Uh, and we had to kind of take the district back to Mm -hmm. when it started and how they, they wanted to allow the quarry to operate and, and given the technology that was required, that was the standard that, that they set at that point, uh, which versus today's sound level apparently mm -hmm. was considered high. At that time, you know, we explained the whole technology mm -hmm. changes. They were, uh, uh, you know, well, you know, and they basically said, well, if we allow you to, to take more granite, would you be willing to accept a lower sound barrier, uh, mm -hmm. you know, which would be more in keeping with what they would give out today? Mm -hmm. And uh, we said, yeah, there's no problem. We don't think we would have any problem meeting that lower level. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they asked us to do testing at the time at all our, our neighbors' uh, property lines to make sure what is the sound level versus where we were, mm -hmm. and we were well underneath uh, what's the requirement, so we really had no problem mm -hmm. accepting a lower level uh, the, from what we had been given in our original permit. Um, we fast forward till today, Randy's been quarrying away and doing a great job. Uh, the way our quarry works is we take out a level, we come back, we drop down, we go back in at 20 feet, 24 feet lower. Um, and he went into the next level and, and what we have found is there's an extreme amount of pressure in just this one level change. All of a sudden pressure has become a, a big deal down there. Um, the, uh, as he showed me one day earlier, I guess it was last year now, uh, you know, we had a, a crack went right across the, the entire floor of the quarry where one side of the quarry lifted up three to four inches versus wow. the other side. And it's the pressure trying to release itself and it's got all this weight pushing down on it. And uh, what happens in that situation is you ruin a lot of granite because it's a random crack. But uh, unlike torches, which actually like pressure somewhat, it, the, the torch tries to explode the granite or the drill just beats the granite. Uh, wire sawing is very susceptible to pressure because once we start sawing, we've just got a very narrow cut and if, if we stop and there's pressure, it'll squeeze the, the, the cut closed and actually pinch the wire. It's like sawing a board. Yeah, exactly. It's, granite's just like wood in many, in many respects. So he's kind of been hit with a double whammy here. He's got the pressure that ruins the granite, but it also you know, prevents him from effectively sawing mm -hmm. without losing wires here and there. Uh, the only real solution to pressure, uh, well, you could bring the burners back and try to free up the entire backside of the quarry, but that's, it, that's right. we don't want to go there. Uh, is you expand the, the area that is open to give it a larger area to dissipate some of the pressure. Mm -hmm. And so we would like to move the, the quarry uh, extremities on, on each side mm -hmm. to open up a, a wider expanse. So when you say each side, is it sort of like the north-south side? Or? Um, if I'm standing there, Randy, it'd be the north and east. North, yeah. north and east. If you're okay. looking at the quarry, it'd be your right and your left, basically. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, you know, we 
are not asking to take more, granted, you know, we, than, than what we were doing. Uh, but we need to, if we want to continue using this method effectively, we need to kind of uh, go with what the technology of today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've done it at, at our Berry quarries and our Bethel quarry, where, you know, where we used to go like this, go right, straight, straight down. down. Yeah. Now we've, you know, tripled or quadrupled the, the floor space to allow this technology space to be operated in and to relieve any of the pressure concerns that we have. Mm -hmm. um, so we went back to the Act 250 people mm -hmm. and requested this um, and said, and they, and this is what triggered it, is, is you know, it's specific in our original permit mm -hmm. that, that, that we are not permitted to go beyond this area. Right. And so, since it was specifically stated, they need to give everybody a chance to comment on it. Um, as we've pointed out to them, it, and when you read all the documentation, the limitations were put in because of noise. Right. No, you know, not because of any other aesthetic or whatever, but mm -hmm. they wanted to contain the noise. Um, and since we're no longer utilizing that technology, noise, we haven't had a noise complaint in, in 25 years, you know, it's just not, not the issue it was back then. So we, we uh, have gone back to them to request relief on, on where we can expand the quarry. Do you, do you have a sense of the distance that you would be expanding? Well, yeah, in base? fact, I, we, we brought a little uh, um, kind of a color-coded map that everybody can, mm -hmm. can have one to that would give you an area. Yeah. Um, so the, the green would be the, the um, area that you... Yeah, if you look at, at the map, the, 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 the pinkish area is kind of the, the footprint as it stands today. Yeah. Uh, the green would be the area that, that over the next, eight, you know, I think our permit runs till uh, 19, I mean 2080 or 86 or... Mm -hmm. but. Um, you know, we would, we would, that green area would be the area that, mm -hmm. that, that they would, he would slowly broaden into probably, yeah. you know, initially he wants to square off the left hand side there, uh, mm -hmm. above our, 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 uh, uh, quarry, uh, maintenance building. Okay. Uh, the other thing that came about as we got into this and as we go down in that quarry is, uh, how we get the granite out. Now when he, he's gone down two levels in the last five years maybe, uh, and now every block that comes out of the floor of the quarry, we're driving up a very steep right. hill really? to get to get up to the top, mm -hmm. and then we're, we're driving on a, a you know, mile plus uh, long road, uh, which is, if you're not paying attention, uh, uh, you know, not that kind to you. Uh, and bringing the granite down through there, um, when in reality, that the level we currently are at, it's a very short distance to just come back out to the old rail road there mm -hmm. and and avoid all the treacherous drop-offs that, right. that, that we experience on the, on the uh, Fletcher Quarry Road. Mm -hmm. So as part of this, you know, we've asked them to allow us to bring blocks that are coming out of that lower level that we would come out that that uh, second entrance and it would also give us from an, a, a safety standpoint if something happens to the one road we have a second way to get in and out uh, which which is always a, a positive to us um, the question came up about you know how far down the the white uh, road there is is kind of the, on the left hand side is the, is the rail trail uh, kind of heads off there mm -hmm. on the the white on the right hand side is you know the the uh, hippie hole uh, access and and you know we don't have any intention of going very far down that right. road just we yeah. you know that question came up with Mike and, and yeah. you, you, um, uh, we want to make as short a a road as we as we possibly can. Mm -hmm which would just be right in that area there with yellow. Um, How far in do you think it is from that, the old road into where you're going to be working? A couple hundred I, feet? Or 1,200. No, I think it's 1,200 feet, feet yeah. total. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And when when do you anticipate really using that uh, the new road? Um, would, I know you're thinking of building it, uh, trying to build it this summer. Do you think that you would be using it um, as soon as it was built, or a couple years I, down the road? I think or? Randy would use it. I mean, yeah. you're, he's on that level now. You're, you're yeah. down there already. Or, you know, he's quarrying okay. on the upper left. Yeah. And those would probably still go down through mm -hmm. through the traditional way when he's on the main floor there, where you see the blue uh, water hole there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's another problem with the pressure. You know, we've always cre created a bowl. Right. to catch as much water because you don't use, have a, a, a great source right, of water yeah. there. And when the cracks occurred in there, we lost all lost our water hole uh -huh. because all of a sudden it just all ran out and we've yeah. had to line, we've had to go and purchase a liner and line our pond so to, to retain the water now. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, mm -hmm. but. Mm. Yeah. So would this be something if you got it through that you'd be using this summer? Possibly. Possibly could, yeah. Yeah, I think. As yeah. soon as you could, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it, the, the whole process would, would develop over time, I think. Uh, you know, the, he doesn't really have a, a, a yard or anything or a place right. for the trucks to turn around. So all this would have to be kind of yeah. worked out, uh, you know, as opposed to when Bob come. Pope comes to check out the quarry. I might, I might drive in there, you know, and then I have to back down the quarry road when I meet a truck coming the other way. Uh, but you know, I think it, you know the intent would be to use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If you've got a road from the top down to the bottom where this other yeah. road is going to, yeah, be, you can kind of see, see it right there. Yeah, yeah. see a little yeah. weird spot. Yeah, so yeah that, you can yeah. drive right to the clear to the top. So. Yeah. You, you, and, and you can drive it. Driving up, it's not that bad, but if you're weak of heart, driving down it can be. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This it's, steep. <laughs> it's, it's fairly steep. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So the, the hearing is um, next Wednesday, um, April 3rd. It's at the community room yeah. in the, in the um, library. library. Yeah. Um, and it starts at, see, there's a at site visit. At 4 o'clock, uh, the meeting. Uh, at, should be wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful, <laughs> wonderful conditions if it won't be any mud. Uh, yeah, no. exactly. Uh, It'll be frozen at, at snow. At four o'clock, we're, we're gonna we're gonna meet uh, at, at the uh, Fletcher Quarry Road, uh, Cabot Road intersection. And, okay. And anyone who wants to to follow us up can if they can, but uh, we'll mm -hmm. be offering rides to, to okay. people who want to come up and. Uh, you know, we'll probably do most of our our visit. I I, I think from from the top. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that would be a good place to just you can see everything from yeah. up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, are you looking at a gate on this road like we have on the other one? Uh, yeah, I, I, we, yeah, we would need to have some sort of... Because we're probably going to want you to fire department hat flipping on uh, yeah. by the Knox box lock. Yeah. Because we're oh, trying yeah. to get rid of the keys in the truck, so we'd probably want you to look at putting a Knox block, which is purchasing yeah. the lock through yeah. us, and then maybe putting a Knox box on the building. It'd be something we'd be interested yeah. in doing. Just yeah. we're trying to, we're getting so many keys now. I've been shutting uh, them off. You guys, we've uh, we've mounted the uh, Knox box and other uh, uh, quarries to yep. the granite post. Yeah, you could right there because yep. they sell padlocks, or if you as if you put the box down on the entrance, we could grab the keys over yep. the gate. Yeah, we've then, done that before. It'd okay, be easy enough yeah, to do. I can be in touch with you. And the second issue on the fire department that may not be for us is they're, they're moving the power line, right, for the, I've heard through uh, Hardwick Electric to the tower. We're, we're, we're in discussions. Okay. Yeah. And, All right. And, so and, and maybe if I can keep in contact yeah, with the, you, because I've been assigned by mutual aid to work with that. <laughs> and yeah, as we look to develop this, you know, we have to have a, a, a uh, plan to what to do with that. Yeah, because our line runs up here right now. You know, yeah. Right, yeah, right now so, we're almost following yeah. the edge yeah, of the we're right on the end coming, of the right tower's right in here somewhere, isn't it? Yeah, probably right okay. you know, off that corner. And, uh, yeah, that's all right. It's kind of right up. You don't need to see. <laughs> so the tower won't have to get moved then, or will it? 
uh, that would not be the intent. Diana, currently, uh, could you help us drop this other shade? <laughs> if none of us can run the window <laughs> shade. <laughs> shade expert. Well, We're making decisions no. on it poorly. We can't run the window shade. I can, uh, I can pull it, but I'm afraid if I pull it too hard. I always break those. Diana things. has a special it's touch. Just a little fringe. I think I have. <laughs> Thank you, you. You break it, you buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Someday we'll get some new ones. Yeah, we could afford that, I think. I think so. <laughs> Get around to don't want to be extravagant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, does oh. make, it does make me feel Great. better that it just <laughs> <laughs> dropped. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> make me so should I be in touch with you on the power cable thing? Oh, oh Kevin. Okay, let me get your contact and I'll get his too. There we go. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, and I'm uh, I'm uh, two four nine eight nine eight four zero two two four nine. Uh, our pope at swensengranite.com. Easy one. <laughs> perfect. And I'll get all you guys in and then I'll send you an email. Yeah, perfect. I've just been assigned to work with that, so I didn't yeah, know, no, I'm and, and reach out to you and then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we're, we're, a little uh, condo issue there with that. Yeah, with the, the water water coming down yeah, and into the breaker ball too. Because who did I hear from? Who's the guy from Cloud Alliance? Michael Brown. Michael, Michael yeah. yeah. He reached yeah. about our power need, but then I'm kind of... Yeah. And Randy, had, Rand, you know, you can always oh, yeah, talk to Randy. Yeah, I've got your uh, number, uh, I think. If it's yeah, site-specific, because yeah. yeah. Randy is usually the most knowledgeable about what's happening up there. And is dogged about tracking us down when he needs something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we we're also needing to put an E line up there because they want to change that from a two-way radio to phone connection. So I'm hoping we can piggyback these things together when they, if if and when right, that yeah, happens. We that's, talk. that's why. Yeah. Because we're going to need to if they're going on poles, go up there. If they're going underground, we're going to have to put in an extra conduit. So we I mean, we'll figure that out. So I'll talk to you about. Yeah, I think yeah. you know we we. we we need to do something. So, yeah. Are there any other questions for um, you guys about the Act 250 permit? I guess probably the hearing will be, you know, it'll be time then for other questions too. And, and I'll, I can't be there, but I'll try right. for it's like we're our fire department. I'll try to get a chance to come just so you can. I okay. just wanted to mention you're still planning to submit a zoning application, right? I believe your note. I, I, you know, I've got this here. I think your note said, I don't think you have to do this, Bob. Well, I, yeah, I, thought, I, mean, I suggested that you call Bob Martin, the new zoning administrator. So do you just want me to, to pull one in? Call him or you can... Um, For which part of it uh, should I be applying? For the conditional use expansion. Okay. Kevin and I'll... I, I can get you his contact information. I'll send you the or maybe that. Yeah. Um, while you guys are here, um, I, you know, I called you, Bob, yeah. to tell you we've been talking and thinking about the paving um, up to the. We're always thinking about it this time of year, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Why would that be? Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is the time of, it hasn't even got bad yet. And you know, I know when it got. Um, shut down a few years ago there always was the intention to to pave up to the entry um, road at, at some point and we we're kind of waiting for the money to collect in the this yep. paving fund which we use some of the money that you reimbursed the town for 25 percent of the yearly amount that you reimburse us with has been going into a paving fund um so um and now there's the um you know and the, and the thought was to go up to the entry road um the new entry road. The, yeah. No, not the new. The original, the, old, the, 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 road, the original yeah. thought was to go to the present entry, entry, um, mm -hmm. and now you know with the, the fact that you're going to have a new road, so that well, let's look into um, paving all the way to that to that road, um, and you know we were eligible to uh, apply for a paving grant from VTrans. That's how we did the lower part of the road before, um, but with. Um, Paving up to this new road that you would like to have significantly increases the distance. It's over a mile um, now, whereas um, it was, you know, up to the present entryway, it's 21, 2,150 feet. 
Um, and we had a fellow from Pike come and, and work out an estimate for the uh, paving grant. Um, and then going up to the new um, proposed quarry entry, um, it's another, um, I think it's 3,000, or, or oh, 3,200 3, feet. So it's a little over a mile. Um, and their projected um, estimate um, that we're going to be using for the um, uh, paving grant um, is 266367 dollars. The maximum for the paving grant is one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. That's the most we can get from VTrans. Um, the town, and that's a eighty percent, twenty percent match. So the town's match for that amount would be um, thirty-five thousand dollars, which gives us two hundred and ten thousand dollars. Right at the moment, we have forty-three thousand dollars in our paving fund. Um, some of it's, you know, some of it's come from uh, Swenson, and some of it was there to begin with, um, which gives us two hundred and eighteen thousand dollars. So we're basically about um, forty-eight thousand dollars short in order to do that. Um, and um, I know we had talked a little bit about maybe having Swenson front us the money, um, but it would basically take us um, about, let's see, seven, it's roughly about $7,000 a year um, that we put into the paving fund from the Swenson reimbursement money. So, you know, seven into... Seven, seven. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so there's seven years and um, and we do have another paving project that we really need to do um, as soon, you know, soon. So um, either, you know, we're going to, I mean, we haven't, we haven't really discussed this as a select board. I just got the figures a week ago. Um, so well, we need, my, you know, our perspective, you know, would be that hey, we would say, you only put 25% of our funding. <laughs> right. That's, uh, you know, we only use a little bit of your road here, Mike. Uh, you know, so I would, you know, I would argue a little bit that that might be. I can tell you where the other money goes. 35% of that goes to pay for the road salt for the pave part that's there now. And when we pave up to the new quarry entrance, our salt budget is going to more than double. And then. Um, 40% of the money that we get from Swenson Quarry goes into our heavy equipment reserve fund to pay for the trucks, you know, kind of maintain the trucks. Not, and I would say that so my section of that of your roads mm -hmm. is probably not warrant 40% of your maintenance costs uh -huh. on your trucks. Right. I mean, if we're being honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but from our perspective, you know, and it. It's not as easy now that we're mm -hmm. a larger corporation. I can't mm -hmm. just say, oh yeah, right. I realize we, that yeah. we and the Swensons would, would mm -hmm. be happy to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you know we would be we would we would have a, a pretty good selling point mm -hmm. to say, listen, you know, if we can come up with the the money to get the job done mm -hmm. now, they're willing to let us credit it over, you know, the seven years mm -hmm. as a deduction to our payments that we know we're going to make. We're going to mm -hmm. be operating. So I think. Right. I think you know, like we said, that we should we should apply and see, and and then we'll sit down and see how do we make it happen. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think it's good for both sides, and mm -hmm. and uh, um, you know, I think we would work hand in hand with you guys on that to figure out a way that we could sell it to both sides. Mm -hmm. as, Randy, as, would as you flip that those light switches with the beautiful on. sun that's now leaving? Yeah. We're all going to be in the dark. Who put the blinds down? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a great idea a moment ago. <laughs> Yeah, but so that's good. We're, you know, yeah. I think that Mike had mentioned that you know, thought that was that you guys would probably front that. Yeah, no, I think you know if you're sitting in in our our chair trying to operate that quarry and and you know we're right now we're in we're in a situation where we've got uh, a lot of granite mm -hmm. sitting on the bank. Uh, we have a a big need for it in in, in one of our facilities, but. You know we're at the we're at the whim of the weather. Yeah, you're at the uh, road. You know, whether we're, you know, sometimes we sacrifice our own road um, because we need it for ourselves. You know, yeah. and that's we understand what we're doing, but we've always been very respectful and careful not to 
upset the apple cart with right. with the town road because you have you guys have worked so well and cooperatively mm -hmm. with us over the years to to try to facilitate it. So for uh, you know when we sit down and say does this make sense? I got to say you know it makes all the sense in the world to figure out a way to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think you can we can depend on that from our side. All right. Yeah. Now is there a chance that through this you would take more granite out, which would up our Paving fund money by well, a little bit, or are you looking? Uh, I, I mean, the uh, we have been permitted to take more granite. Um, mm -hmm. I would say, in Randy's current configuration, uh, he's well, of course he's he's kind of a sandbagger, so he never wants to. <laughs> he, he, he never wants to. I can't do it anymore. Yeah, never yeah, yeah, never wants to promise too much. <laughs> right I, I, I think we're we're probably at a plateau level right at the moment until some other things happen. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have to move the power line to open up a little bit right, more on that side and yeah. some of that. Can't do you know, so I don't that. think you can. You should depend it on it in the next two, three years. Right. But, you know, over time, yes, but probably not you. immediately, probably not. Okay. Yeah. Permit will be a big part of it. He he, mm -hmm. he better not come up too too short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. Well, um, we'll talk some more about this paving okay. fund grant um, yeah. later on in the meeting, um, and you know, knowing that there is some way that we can work out a, yeah. a deal, um, you know, we'll try to figure out what'll work both good yeah. for you no, and for, for the town. So, 100%. Um, yeah. And we do have this other project that really does need to get done. So. Um, and we've kind of got to balance, um, so it may be that um, that you will be, you know, will be paying back um, some over time um, and uh, using some of our paving fund that we have now to, to do this other project too. But we'll figure that I out. I think we'll that work out. I think we can work something. Right. The the deadline for the paving grant is April fifteenth, so we need to make a decision tonight whether right. we're going to go for it and. Um, Mm -hmm. And the work, uh, the paving work, um, uh, could happen this summer or it could happen next summer. We have 30 months from once the grant is awarded to us. And, and I've been told that uh, because we haven't um, applied for a paving grant for a few years, that we're pretty much a shoe in to get it. So um, um, that would be good. So it would be good. It would be nice to see it happen this year. But same thing. Right. A lot of it's beyond our control. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Yeah. So we'll, you know, I think we're going to want to hang on to some of our paving fund for this other project. We'll see how much, um, you know, you know, kind of work out. It may be that you would, we would be paying you back for like 10 years or 12 <laughs> years, a certain amount no, each I, year. No, you know, we would, we would have a written agreement. and. Um, I don't think we are. As long as that's doable, that makes it a lot easier exactly. for us yeah. to make you know, decisions. I even think yeah. on our side, it, you mm -hmm. know, the, it's it's not a, an expense so much for mm -hmm. us. You know, it's mm -hmm. a, it's kind of a loan, and we're going to get paid back. And yeah. you know, yeah. that, I don't mm -hmm. think it, it it's uh, a terrible mm -hmm. thing yeah. for either side. So we don't have a lot of pavement that needs work, but the stuff that we do have, which is right mm -hmm. in the village around the fire right. department, yeah, around that island, that it's getting pretty like, looks pretty ready. <laughs> And that probably won't happen for a couple of years, but it's definitely something we've been talking about for a while now. It needs to be done. Yeah, so. yeah it'd be nice. I'd personally love to see this happen this summer if we yeah, could, we as far as the hill. Yeah. It'd be mm -hmm. kind of nice to get it done and over with and, mm -hmm. and get move on, especially now that we know the financing part of it is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. With that, yeah. some bids coming in, I guess, too. Some no, the, the uh, RFP has not gone out yet. Okay. We probably won't go out until we get the grant. Sure. Yeah. Get yeah. Yeah. Make sure we got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Right. And so when the time comes, <coughs> we'll maybe just figure out a, a yeah. payback arrangement. How much you know? Um, and we'll uh, get a price on the village stuff, so we'll know what we've got right, have yeah. down there. Yeah. So um, that'll work. Okay. Great. Good. Good. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Now on the power line, that's not a done deal thing. Yes, yeah, so I don't need to rush out and do something with you in two weeks. Then. Figure well, out the power line I think deal. You, you, you probably you, you better keep moving. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be gone for a week. He has a so I got to mind. But um, <laughs> you know, we kind of missed the window. There, there was some thought that they would do some of this work in the winter. Uh, the power I, line. I, I imagine everything yeah. will will grind to a halt here for the next few weeks. Um, well, just yeah. Yeah. nobody's going to. Yeah, we had too much snow this winter. Yeah. And the, the site they're moving that line on is it going to be on the ground or is it going to be on poles? Oh, right. if, if, if we if we do 
what we're talking now is, is to, to go right about from, uh, you know, down where, where the parking area is. Where there and, is a pole. And go straight over the quarry, up to the poles. upper quarry. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and we have, it's not without concerns because anytime you have an overhead, right, you've got crane you know, issues. It, it'll be, it'll be high. No, it's not, it's more that, that if, if he does have to do a shot for some reason, Why occasionally right? we get in a, in, a, in a position where we have to blow off a, a toe gotcha. or something. And if we hit it, you now what do we do? And So in so, essence, they'd be bringing primary up there then. We're going to. Uh, um, they'd bring primary up to the okay, uh, that, yeah, yard that, and then okay. we would. Own gotcha. from the yard up. Okay, but it in the air, so it simplifies yeah. things. So I was worried yeah, about yeah. conduit, so I'll be in touch then anyway. Because yeah. yeah. I've already got our power needs through to those guys in yeah. the cloud, so you've got that. I just wanted to, if we got to get an E-line up there, I just got to figure out how we do that. If it's aerial, we probably can do that, but I need to make sure it's going to work for everybody. And the only thing, you you have to be have your eyes open. Anything that does go over there, there is a possibility that he'll get overzealous someday and, and break it and, and break it and you know, okay and, fair and, enough <laughs> we flooded the shop for you so. yeah i know <laughs> so that, that was, was the no least good deal that was the least we could do you know? <laughs> he called me i'm like shop flooding from your pipe i'm like hmm well yeah yeah <coughs> Okay. All right, 220 outlet was water. Water coming out everywhere. No Call me at work. I'm like, well, hmm. a little nervous. <laughs> so, okay, everybody's still here. Yeah. We okay. survived another year. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Randy, all set for town treasurer report. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of nice, you know, knowing that we've got the financing options to make right. it happen. That yeah, really does ease it up. We could do both this year. So, so I'm just getting the paint. The I don't know. What's his name? What's the community room? What is that? It's up to the school. Oh, the school. School. Oh, so the percentages oh, on the Swenson money is twenty-five into the paving. Um, 35 into yeah. the most of 40% into the curve. Yeah. So we can't do both this. So We've got to do all the er erosion stuff first. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. so that's got to so wait. Gonna, it's going to be at least um, two two summers out, I think. That's good. We're going to do one this road. Yeah. Uh, we would be paving, let's see. Uh, Thank you. This part, we, we could do that this summer. Wow. We would, no, we would be this paving. This is so yeah. much bigger than okay. it used to be. We'll be I can see some here. of those numbers now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's your new glasses. <laughs> you <gotta be> <laughs> I cleaned them today. Uh -huh. Paint sticks right to them when I'm shooting it. <laughs> uh, balance sheet is on top. First and second page. And pages 1 through 12 are financial statements. Mm -hmm. And then... Final page. I inserted the due to the from, so you can oh, see what our current and everybody has. Due to and due from. Those are the different reserve funds that equal on your balance sheet. There. Yep. So after today's payroll and AP, I transferred forty thousand to cover bills. Mm -hmm. um, in the last two weeks, as far as cash receipts, we took in $6,136.55, ranging from fleet permits, library donations, library book sales, our pie breakfast was a big, big intake. Mm -hmm. It was nice to see the kind of um, sheet from Jack about... Yeah, the breakdown, breakdown yep, yeah. versus last year. Yep. Yep. Um, coffees, dog licenses, of course. And... Um, Land records, prepaid taxes, town hall rentals. Um, as far as delinquencies, in the last two weeks, Ron has given me three thousand three hundred forty-nine dollars and seventy-seven cents. Pretty good. That's coming in pretty steady. Yep. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and my ink's going bad. I should get and I'm trying to work it for all it's worth. Um, so if no questions on the bills, again, I tried 
yeah, the total playing it out a little differently yeah. and tonight yeah. breaking it down, but yet some bills are going to ride mm -hmm. over it. It's in the general fund. You don't see it in the other funds. Right. It's in the general fund, which is your largest to go through. Mm -hmm. um, so on the agenda, we have brought up discussion about the building maintenance fund. So I can go. I actually got an older sheet. Well, maybe I can find it on here. So, um, the first, uh, you said it's on page five. Yeah, it should be on page five. It was on the, the last meetings uh, on page five. Um, actually, I'm going to go to the old one. Actually, I should find it here so you guys can follow along. But the first, the building reserve fund and reimbursing the town for the 2018 building repairs. Uh, this past summer, last summer, we um, painted the roof on the town office and then we redid the floor in the town hall and we have a building reserve fund which if you look at the do to do from form at the very back um, yeah, there's a building reserve fund uh, let's see i'm gonna get to the back page this so okay. $15,102.91 so we've had money in that fund for quite a while and um, you know when we were discussing doing the work on the two different buildings we had talked about using money from that reserve yeah, fund which we didn't do it came out of the general operation we should be using it for most funds yeah so um randy was wondering um, i'm proposing that because um, there are other fees under that's included in this piddly things mm -hmm. um, we paid Brian Perry as far as the town hall for the, the yucky tables for the $80 uh -huh. I'm not referring to that so I'm strictly for the town hall replacing the 2140 which was the amount of the flooring mm -hmm. the floor to be done out of the town hall and then the town office uh, $2,048 um, you can see that those are strictly amounts, just yeah, the one yeah, are, are on page yeah. five. It's yeah. under yeah. Our buildings yeah. and grounds. Um, well, there are other. So this would be the total. Yeah. This is yeah. the total for both. For both. Yeah. Pulled out, but crediting mm -hmm. back the um, general fund. Yeah. So, so that's my proposal. What Brandy um, would like us to do is approve taking that amount of money um, out of the building maintenance fund, out of the building maintenance fund, putting it back, fund, in, the putting it back in the general fund. So I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second. second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right. So um, the next item on, on, oh, on the list, um, let me mm -hmm. give you a little backstory on that. Um, so we had a, a, pro, a professional audit on our. Um, proposed budget for fiscal year 2020, um, which when we saw how much the proposed budget had come to, we felt kind of nervous because it was a lot of money. Um, we didn't know the fire department was going to have a $31,000 addition to the budget, so we dropped it um, and dropped it from the budget for this year. We would still like to do it. We need to do it at some point in the future. We haven't had an audit since May. Yeah, we've got to do that. And then, so after what was the cost to do the audit? Eighteen thousand yeah. dollars. So after town meeting, when there were these questions about what should be the proposal for the total amount for the budget, um, and the, we had a couple other questions, I called VLCT just to get an answer about that because there were differences of opinion, and and I didn't know who was right and what the answer was. Um, but at the time that I called, I also um, asked some questions about um, the surplus, um, reserve funds, other kind of money questions that had come up while we were working on that, um, the budget for the fiscal year 2020. Um, and the, the lawyer that I talked with said, you know, we have a, a financial advisor that you can use through VLCT. Um, let me pass this on to our director and she'll get in touch with you. Um, and you can ask her about some of these things. So um, the director called, I had a conversation with her, and um, and she again mentioned the, the, that the VLCT has a financial advisor, his name is Bill Hall, um, and he, um, there's a program that they use for towns um, where he will come and um, basically do um, prep work with the town treasurer, with the town, preparing for an audit. Um, he's done that for a number of different towns. Um, 
there is a fee. He would come at first and um, he might be here for two, five hours at the max. Um, 80, it's $88 an hour, by the way. Um, and he would get an assessment of what work would need to be done and how much he might need to work with Brandy um, to help get those. Um, Since I've never been trained. Right, practices in place. Yeah. So he would give us an estimate once he's met, you know, come and get a sense of the situation. Um, and then we, we could have, you know, either approve or not approve doing, having him come in. Um, but what, would, what he would be doing essentially is working with Brandy and anyone else, our own auditors perhaps, um, no, I hope so. to, but mostly Brandy, to get practices in place that would um, make the actual audit um, much smoother, um, things that, you know, and that's kind of what's one of the things that Brandy really wanted to, to get out of this audit is, you know, no wanting what to know records? what to do right. and how to do it. So this would be the perfect way to answer those questions mm -hmm. and it would also have the town better prepared for when we actually hire someone to come and do an audit. Mm -hmm. and the director told me that often when people know that, um, that we've worked with someone from VLCT, particularly this person, their um, uh, proposal for the amount of money that would cost the town to do the audit uh, is usually less because they know they have an anticipation of what they're going to be walking into as far as practices. <coughs> so it seems to me like the perfect thing to do. In yep. fact, I'm kind of glad that we decided not to right. have the professional audit because now we have, we'll have a year um, to prepare. <laughs> um, yeah. well, we should definitely budget for that audit for next year. We should. I mean, if, if it seems possible, yes, we should. Yeah. Since it's been how long? 91. Since 91. Yeah, it's been a long time. We couldn't even... And that was even probably a small audit then. That probably was a full-blown audit. Yeah, I have no idea what, what yeah. happened from that. I don't remember ever having a big audit right. here. I mean, I sat through an audit report um, for the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, and, you know, I always thought an audit was, well, they just make sure that you know, all the dollars are lining up, but there's a whole, there's a whole range of Retention. things that, there's right. There's right. The ones you're supposed to have. So, yeah, all this stuff. With us switching properly. accounting systems, I foresee Nimrick being much easier and it reports much easier. Yeah. But still yeah. again. So, you know, I, I talked to Brady about this and um, I did um, ask the director to go ahead and Try, you know, check because what what the VLCT does is they contact this person and explain the situation, and then he'll let them know, and then the VLCT will contact us. Okay. We'll arrange a time. And this is what you'd like to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I made sure that Brandy was interested. So get this done and over with before we schedule. That way you're ready audit. for the audit. Yes. That yes. Way whatever you got to okay. fix. Otherwise, they're just coming into the vault going. Ah. Where is all the stuff? You don't have it. <laughs> so yeah, this would be nice. This would be really good. This person will come, and there will be a, a bill for that. You know, it'll be at eighty-eight dollars an hour. It could be anywhere from two hundred dollars to maybe five hundred dollars um, for him to come and and spend the time figuring out what's needed here, and then he'll put together an estimate, which he'll um, give to the town, and, and we can decide, um, you know, if, if we want to spend the money to have him come. Um, um, and I'm not sure, hopefully this won't take too long to get in right. place so we can get going on it. But. Yeah. I'd say yes. Yeah, let's go for it. All right. Especially that's what you want. I think you should get the, yeah, that's what you think you need to do to get there. To get yourself prepared for the real thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. So I'll make it official. I'll just make a motion that we begin the process of um, having the financial advisor from the LCT come and meet with the, the town, Brandy, um, to begin a um, uh, process of preparing for um, a professional audit, hopefully a year from now. I'll second. All in favor? All right. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, I think this will be money well spent. Um, so, uh, curious. I know, Brandy, you mentioned that you and Skip had gone to a VLCT uh, like seminar day-long oh, thing I, with him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, about, yeah. So. Did I give you anything? towards this audit as far as preparing you for it or getting ready for it or is that have nothing to do with this audit? There's stuff that, that um, starting here, this is the way you do it. This is the way you hold the retention kind of thing. Um, each mm -hmm. town does it differently. Mm -hmm. Some people don't even have 
select board orders. Mm -hmm. They ended up they end up dispersing them to each vendor so that you know the history of the vendor. So it, it's gonna yeah. Mm -hmm. so I'm intrigued to know what right. What's the easiest? What works best? Yeah, for us? what's best practice kind of thing? Um, you know what? what a, um, yeah, I think it would be good. Talking of audits, I have my annual payroll audit. Mm -hmm. um, BLCT is coming out this Thursday for the payroll audit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Who who does it? Is, is Vicky Bill? Bear. Okay, because yeah. just Bill Hall do that, but he's no. he's sort of semi-retired, so. He's kind of in the in the wing of VLCT, but um, but he, he is sort of retired. Well, Jason, that's yearly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's good. Mm -hmm. And that always goes really smoothly. Mm -hmm. Good. We tend good. to the the records of that. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Perfect. So as far as I know, it's still in process, and we just have to wait to hear from VLCT, but. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. If I don't hear from them in a couple weeks, so I'll go. Uh, okay, Diana. <coughs> okay, all right, so. Um, okay, so let's um, see Patrick and Norman here. We could jump ahead to. I know Brett wanted to be here too, um, and we're scheduled to start at 7 10, so. Um, Maybe we'll do um, one other thing first, just so that whatever. She, 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 but come on in, sit down. Yeah, yeah. Nice, 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 nice comfy <laughs> chair over there, Norman. You can come sit here. Nice comfy the metal chair. <laughs> Nobody's sick in here today. <laughs> Unless you are. <laughs> so um, why don't we get the other, some other um, town official appointments out of the way? Um, so let's see. Um, so there are some new appointments that aren't part of the town report that um, that we um, hopefully will have going forward. And, and one is for uh, Central Vermont Fiber. Um, we met with them yeah. a while ago. Um, and they asked that the town um, have a representative to their board um, and an alt alternate. Um, and we established one, um, but apparently that was for 2018. Now we're, we're in a new year, so, um, and the uh, rep that we chose, um, or the volunteer, I should say, <laughs> was Skip, Skip Lindsay, um, and Susan Martin um, volunteered to be the alternative. And both of them are fine with continuing um, as the uh, representative and alternative to Central Vermont Fiber for 2019. Um, so I would like to uh, make a motion that we um, appoint uh, Skip Lindsay as the representative to Central Vermont Fiber and that we appoint Susan Martin as the alternative. Um, so okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> so, um, and then we hadn't heard back from the folks on uh, the Woodbury Fund Committee, um, so I had an email. They're needing a person on there. There is a there is a uh, empty space there, um, and there has been for quite a few years. Um, but the the people I contacted Peter Peltz, um, and he contacted Robin um, and Grady, and they are both willing to continue. Um, John Meyer is also listed. He's not really a, a Woodbury resident. He owns plenty of property in town, um, but um, but he he seems to be kind of a I don't think we need to appoint him. He's just, He's just there, yeah. kind of overseer of the Woodbury Fund. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we need to appoint Peter, Robin, and Grady for that committee. Round up another one at some point. If, yeah. If, um, if somebody... You're going to see me coming. <laughs> <laughs> I could do it if I want. Okay. A lot of volunteers in there tonight. Okay. Um, <laughs> I guess um, Peter's the chair of that, so maybe, um, I mean, okay. Yeah, we can just we do can it. do that, I guess. I'm sure that we find. Yeah. Yeah. You have a willing volunteer. Oh, I always say yes. Okay. <laughs> so I would make a motion that we appoint um, Peter Peltz, um, Robin, Brady Neal, and Norman Etkin um, to the Woodbury Fund Committee. Good for you, Norman. <laughs> Open mouth. More stuff to do, right? It's a pretty, pretty low key. Thing to I'll do second that. Okay. 
So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So um, I talked to Mary again, Gemini, about um, I'd like to have the Sylvia Jackson Fund have a kind of an official committee also. Um, she was going to contact the people that are presently on that, um, Jeff Thompson and Susan Martin and herself, and she hadn't heard back from Susan and Jeff. Um, so, well, I'm going to, I want to wait and make sure that they're, so we'll hold off on that one. Um, and then um, Laura had contacted um, Heather Lanfrier about being a health officer and uh, Heather mentioned to Laura that she was interested, um, but I would rather wait until she has a better sense of what that would entail before uh, before we appoint her. Um, and I haven't and also, heard we got to talk about a salary of some kind. I'm sure right. she's not going to volunteer to do it. So. Yeah, not for what she's got to do. Right. Got yeah. quite an involved job nowadays. Okay. So that's that can be a topic. Um, Maybe, the next maybe we'll have a health officer um, topic on our next agenda and, yeah. and talk so about get it Maybe we can get her to come for the meeting. Um, I have sent her some information, it sounds like from Laura, that she didn't receive it. So, so But we'll hold off on that for tonight. That's pretty much it um, for appointments for tonight. Um, let's see. We could move on to the Woodbury Volunteer Fire Department building project. Sure. Are you, do you anticipate anyone coming? No, I told Chance that? I would okay. I could speak All to right. him. I don't know why yet. Okay. Um, and then we'll wait and see if Brett shows up for Mormon's here. He's on the committee, so if I miss some, you can fill in the blanks. Right. So we've had a couple of meetings so far, and we're focusing on uh, looking at a, a building on the former Aronson site and uh, renovating main station into some form of meeting room and uh, office space type space so no specifics on that yet in our mm -hmm. next meeting is more likely to be the 18th of uh, April. I don't know if you've seen the emails. I have seen. Uh, yeah. Janice couldn't make it. Um, yeah. and with the antis we're anticipating sending out some letters to three different architects to um, be interviewed by us and then we pick somebody to do that uh, initial design to figure out how much things are going to cost work. Mm -hmm. That sound about right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's about as far as we've toured the existing facilities and everyone's kind of got a feel for the issues and... Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything to add? Do you think that I missed? No, okay. that's the idea. No, that's, good. that's where we're at. It's not a whole lot okay. yet. Well, you know, I think there's a, a good committee that's involving yep. both some mm -hmm. callous people and other yeah. stuff. Because we've Mike's Mike's attending us. Uh, select board, board. Select board. We've got yeah. Denise Wheel, the chair of the Callis Select Board. What's that other fellow's name from uh, Callis? Barry Bernstein. Barry Bernstein is there. Peter Peltz has participated in one of the meetings. I'm hoping yeah. he'll continue. He's planning on continuing. Okay. We couldn't make the last yeah. one. Yeah. Right. So we've got a pretty good group together. And, and Norman is. Norman, yeah. Advising. Yeah. yeah, no surprises this time. I think that's the thing that I've been hearing from the fire department is doing the best we can come up with. <laughs> Something that'll. That we're trying to do. Obviously, we've got to do something that's going to fit within our cost window, which can't be before. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to look at what we can deal with with those two sites. Maybe the whole, all three. Where that's all to be determined. We're looking at maintaining what we have, plus building a a new facility for all the trucks in one spot, or most of the trucks in one spot, which will solve a lot of the issues we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you can use some of the old buildings to fulfill some of the other purposes we have to have. Which is again something that came out in the village study committee. So we're kind of following mm -hmm. that pattern. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back just a bit to the building repairs. Um, I, I was thinking that it might be best, um, I know, um, you know there are thoughts of what could be done on both the town office and the town hall um, with this coming summer. When we, you know, talked about working on the floor last year, Robin Durkee had some other things that the built the town hall could use. Um, yeah. I was thinking of, of maybe just having a small committee, um, nothing formal, just kind of an ad hoc committee to kind of come up with um, uh, just a, a list of projects for both here. Um, and for the town hall, you know, kind of anticipating things so we can do, 
you know, maybe one thing one year, next year, and have a sense of um, try to think ahead of time of what needs to be done um, to the two different buildings. Um, and you know, I was thinking it would be the select board, maybe um, Randy and Diana, Robin Durkee, um, anyone else who might might be interested um, to meet informally um, to come up with a, a we could call it a five-year plan for each building. Um, just things um, might be different members for the different buildings. <coughs> um, well, or would it you could want be a committee to do it all. Um, I would say rather than have, having two different okay. groups, maybe just one. And right, as long as this building in the town hall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. town office. Yeah, we've got a fund hall. that you might as well have a plan for. Right, yeah. we've got that money that just sits Instead there. Figuring this stuff you can't do. Yeah. Figure out how you can do it. Yeah. Okay. And then maybe going forward, having a, a small amount of appropriation each year that goes into that fund. Um, yeah. If we're going to be starting yeah, getting into so. it pretty consistently. Start off with, obviously, Diana and mm -hmm. Robin, who mm -hmm. would know their buildings the best. Yeah. Randy. Yeah. Randy. What this place might need in the future. And mm -hmm. Robin, I'm sure, has probably got a laundry list up there. She, she had a list um, you know, when we, after we had done the floor. There were a couple other things that she had yeah. mentioned. Um, so. Okay, so we'll you know, try to get that, mm -hmm. get that going here at so some point down the road. So everybody's here who um, said that they would be here for the graded school Act 46 confusion, um, pull your hair out and scream in the woods kind of ordeal that we're under. Um, so um, Patrick, I'm gonna open it up to you. If it's okay with you, I'll just sit right here. Um, yeah, that's fine. I just wanted to give you a little update. Uh, it is always unfolding. Um, in no particular order, the first thing, the, the, the school board did approve a budget uh, at our meeting last week. It seems like it was a month ago. That's the new school board? No. Oh, I'm getting to that. Right. Right. Just for the Woodbury Elementary Schools, if nothing changed, okay. we did uh, put together a budget uh, and we scheduled or the notices at least been on front porch form yet. We haven't done anything else about it yet. But we uh, scheduled a meeting, uh, a special town meeting, or school district meeting, for May 9th. Because by the time you give notice and everything. That's where? Uh, uh, you had to ask, right? I'm sure it'll be at the school building. Um, Harder? No, here. Okay. This is. This, just but see, this is what drives me crazy. So you have to just right. tolerate me tonight, right? <laughs> Um, because that that's one, so we're moving forward with that in case. We have two budgets to mess with. Well, Jesus. <laughs> that's point number two. So I was at a uh, meeting last week at the supervisory union with basically, basically it was the executive committee. It's the chairs of the various uh, boards within the supervisory union, and I was kind of taken aback uh, because. I had just testified in the legislature that we wanted an extension. <laughs> and that, that group of people, when I got there, was like, they're moving forward. They, they want to have the new board for the union uh, district mm -hmm. elected, and they want to pass a budget, and they want this whole thing to be in place by June 30th. Can I just ask like, what the motivation yes. is? In the bill that Senator Baruth proposed, there's a, a carrot of sorts, and uh, what his amendment, it's called the Baruth Amendment now, I believe it's going to be what actually happens, but that's just me. Um, he said, his, his amendment states that for those districts that actually merge by June 30th, they will get to keep their... Um, small schools grants as they currently have them presumably in perpetuity but you know you can't tie the hands of a future legislature but that's the idea right now we have to compete for that we have to meet certain uh, criteria to get the small schools grant we did get it for the coming school year and so did Greensboro or Lakeview uh, but this would so they're afraid of not getting it yes years. yes so they are 
they're eating the carrot. <laughs> um, which, to some degree, you can't blame them. It, for us, it's worth over $70,000 a year, and for Greensboro, I think it's more than that. I think it's about 80000 ballparky. So it's a fair amount of money that you would be crazy to turn your nose up to, but it also means it's the middle of March. Well, it's rapidly turning into the end of March, and we have very little time to pull this all off, in my opinion. And my argument's been, if, if we're going to rush this, we're going to make some bad decisions. But uh, I'm a minority on this, it sounds to me. So that was point number two I wanted to update you on. So what the plan at the supervisory union level right now is, on April 22nd, they've already warned this meeting, there will be the election of the new board members for the merged district, April 22nd. Now that uh, is uh, done from the floor, so they have to have, again, a sort of a meeting of the electorate. Um, and people will be nominated from the floor. Uh, for what it's worth at this point, uh, uh, Kim Silk and Phoebe Slater have agreed that they will run for that board, which I think is fine. That's in Hardwick. Well, that meeting will be in Hardwick, I'm pretty sure. How um, many days do they have to warn for that election? Oh, uh, it was warned last week sometime. Oh, it was actually in the paper as far okay. as I remember. I so. <coughs> so I think it's I think it's duly warned. They they had their fingers burned on that one. On the, yeah. well, what will be the composition of that board? Uh, two members from each of the participating towns. That's the, the so-called uh, uh, default uh, structure. So two, 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 and two. Eight they would members. Have the transition type board. Uh, yeah, not to be confused not with the actual transition structure. board, uh, <laughs> which is meeting on Wednesday night. Oh, there is a transition um, board. Too. Okay. And uh, yeah, the transition board has its major function at this point is to draft the budget for the union board to approve. I'm on the transition board, it's the chair and the clerk, so Kim and I are on that. We'll be meeting Wednesday night. We don't really know what they propose to do around the budgets, but I'm guessing it'll be some version of just merging the budgets that the three towns have worked on heretofore. Then we'll see if it passes. But the, but the idea is you, you they, the plan right now is to elect the new board members, the eight board members, on April 22nd, and that night have a meeting at which that new board will pass the budget. Now, to some degree it's doable because a lot of the people on the new board are likely to be people like him. Who, like him, perfect example, who, who already know what it's been going on with the budget. So, or we're involved with the transition board. So that's the plan. And then they will warn a meeting basically that night for uh, the electorate to approve that budget, which will be done by Australian ballot. I think, don't quote me on this one, but I think the date they're looking at for that meeting is May 28th, which is like the Tuesday after Memorial Day or something. Mm -hmm. um, so they're moving this right along. Now, if, the, if for some reason the budget, proposed budget for the Union District doesn't pass, time is very short mm -hmm. to make revisions and get another budget. And, but there are provisions for that. There's actually provisions in Baruth's bill, I believe, um, or maybe the House version for you know those towns that don't make it you get 87 percent of your budget plus four percent and i don't know we'll see what that ends up looking like so what happens if you pass both budgets if you pass if we pass our first budget on may 9th and then they subsequently pass a budget on may 20 i asked the same question paul and they the answer given to me was the first one becomes moot Okay. It's superseded by the new district and the new board and the new budget. So all the work that the school board did to come up with that budget is 
was a week ago. But that's only if the unified district begins on July. Actually, on begins July. on July 1st. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And also on May 28th, the, the passing the articles also, the default uh, article. Actually, I should have double checked uh, before I came um, today, and I didn't really have a chance. I don't remember the date on the articles, but there's another articles committee meeting scheduled sometime pretty soon. Uh, in a uh, or in April anyway to um, finalize the articles and but I think it's a different date norm that date. that we vote on the articles I don't know how familiar you are with all this but the articles are like the bylaws mm -hmm. for this new union district and the state has given us certain bylaws or articles we get to amend them but only if we have uh, proposed a set of those to the electorate again which has to approve them and there has to be a public informational meeting first I think that's happening in April that's why I'm a little confused so so I, I can't give you those dates right now but that's going to be a, happening sort of all at the same time mm -hmm. um, so, there's so a lot it's the electorate that, electorate that will vote on the um, articles and not the uh, board the new the board that's going to be formed I think the new board has to actually approve the okay. articles that would make sense to okay. present to the electorate, okay. but that's all scheduled, mm -hmm. and I could probably get you those dates um, mm -hmm. without any trouble. But it, in a way, it, you'll hear about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will we'll update you. But there's a lot going on, and it's full steam ahead. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess you know we just gotta see. Now the other issue in all of this, of course, is the question of the lease. You know, our plan, which is a plan that I believe the select board and the school board agreed on uh, before town meeting, was that we are going to pursue a lease between uh, the town and the school. So the, you, the town would lease the building to the school. Mm -hmm. And um, that then becomes what's called an encumbrance in the Act 46 language and carries over to the new union district. We understand it, everybody said it, and nobody's really uh, disagreed, that if we have a lease in place, the new district has to, the new union district has to accept it, at least for two years. Um, and in fact, the article language that's been worked on actually uh, clarifies that further, I believe. And now Norm's on the committee, so maybe you can but, but you know, it's all these, like Patrick saying, all these moving pieces. So uh, the last version of the draft articles included the lease and it ran through uh, end of June 2021 is the way they looked at it. So that lease would mm -hmm. follow suit until then. But, um, but who knows what the final one will be <coughs> and, and that has to get approved by the electorate. So... That part remains to be seen, and the that's articles, not happening. The articles, yeah, the that's not happening yeah. till after, like Patrick's saying, there's a hearing on it, and then mm -hmm. there'll there'll be a, a vote. I guess it has to be by Australian ballot because everything, aside from selecting that new board, was. And now I think it's scheduled, or, or they're planning for it sometime in May. Maybe it's coincident with the other one or not. I'm not yeah, sure. It might be. That would maybe be sensible, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, but anyway, you know, at this point, there was some there was some pushback on the idea of a lease when it, we first talked about it. But the uh, the articles committee, I think, has done great work and come to what it sounds like an agreement about it that it would be acceptable uh, at least in the beginning, the first two years. So we have to finish that lease. We have a, a updated draft um, from our attorney that our both your attorney and our attorneys has been have been looking at. Um, the, our, the lease committee is, I don't know, you were going to invite we're, people. We're going to be meeting uh, hopefully this week, uh, probably Thursday night, um, okay. to go over the, the most recent draft of the lease. And then I think, assuming that all the substantive questions are answered, we send it back to our attorneys to say, put the finishing touches on this, so let's try to sign this thing sometime soon. We don't want to wait and wait and wait to sign that. We yeah. want that done. I think, yeah. even before the new board is mm -hmm. in place, I mm -hmm. think, mm -hmm. right? As soon yeah. as, yeah, the yeah. goal is to have it done as soon as possible. Now, the only tr trick to that is I'm out of town for a couple of weeks, um, but if we're, if that's the direction we're going to take, mm -hmm. uh, if the lease committee feels, you know, really unanimous about the approach they want to take, then 
we we should go ahead and um, schedule, I think, a joint meeting of the two boards to vote on it, and it'll be a separate meeting, another meeting, <laughs> but yeah. I don't know any other way to do it. Um, although, so your next meeting would be, um, well, your next one I won't be around for. Eight. Um, eight. So the, the one after that would be the 22nd. 22nd. Yep. Which, but that's the night of right. the special right. election. So this needs to be done by the 8th then, you think? Well, we can... I want. To, I think it should be done by the 22nd, before that, before yeah. that board is actually elected. We, we could have a, you know, a special select board meeting. Uh -huh. um, do you, we, have, it, we have 24 hours to warn it. it. What are the qualifications for the school board? Oh, it's pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. Um, I, I like to give more than 24 hours. Right. I, well, I think if, if, yes. if the committee <coughs> seems to be in agreement, which I think they're going to be because they have been right along, mm -hmm. um, then we could we could probably give a full day, five days more. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, based on this, I'm just going to alert the board members, the school board members, that we're likely looking at a special board meeting to approve the lease okay. sometime the week of like the 15th. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see how, how quickly. It won't be a long meeting, I don't no, think. No, no. we will have all seen it <laughs> yeah. before, you know, no, we I meet think it would to be approve more it. Formality than anything else. But ha ha has every are you, are you, have your members actually seen the draft, the latest draft? Uh, the select board members have no. Okay, well that's probably some. I think if you see the draft first, then the final version won't mm -hmm. be such a surprise. But there's no big surprises in it. Yeah. I think the attorney did a good job of good. kind of encapsulating the issues. Mm -hmm. There are some questions that are still hanging out there uh, that need to be answered. One about insurances, who covers what. Mm -hmm. That should probably, at least we need to make sure we know mm -hmm. who's covering what, and in the case of a lease, who's right. covering what, right? Yeah. So I, I need to contact the OSSU about that, right. um, I, and I will do that tomorrow. I talked to Brandy about that, and pretty much... Of the, all of the, you know, the buildings, the grounds at the school, um, the town, the only thing that the town is really has ensured there are the contents inside the library. Yeah. So yeah. The, the library board um, pays for the liability and the items, including the heating system that's also including into that um, through VLCT. Mm -hmm. The school pays for the shell. Sure. So. Uh, makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. um, we just want to be clear that that would be the, the deal going forward, right. I guess. Yeah. You know, there has been some discussion mm -hmm. about, you know, well, it is the town's building, shouldn't they be doing all this? But, you know, there's also been discussion that, well, it's been this way for 100 years, and there's no reason to think that the school district wouldn't continue to pay for X, Y, and Z. You know, so I think that's where we want to end up. And in fact, the draft lease addresses that to a large extent about who pays for what. Yeah, the draft lease is pretty much just trying to formalize in words on a document what has existed since forever. You know, we're not really trying to change anything. Right. It's and just I think trying that's to perfectly reasonable. yeah to have a written document um, that. Is pretty explicit in what we've done all along anyway when we were blissfully ignorant of the whole situation yeah. so well there is a there is a law that has been brought to our attention that you know uh, via the agency on education uh, to the supervisory union to us saying that school funds cannot be used on town buildings but we know that there are lease arrangements in many buildings across the street, uh, across the state, Norm found that out from somebody at the AOE. So we know this ha is being done. So there's no reason to think it can't be done. But my my approach to this is: the committee meets, we finalize, we give it to our attorneys. They come up with a version, we sign it, and then we send it to the OSSU to say, "Here it is. What objections do you have?" I I, I just think. We should keep it clean. This is an agreement between the town and the school district. And yes, we have to at some point get agreement from the OSSU, but let us agree first. We're the two municipalities in the town. So, I mean, does that make. That makes perfect. That's kind of the, that's been our plan. 
to pretty much do you that. Know, I do expect some discussion. <laughs> yes. With the OSSU when the time well, comes. From, from that first statement from their lawyer, um, it probably will be quite a bit of discussion, but maybe not. I, I mean, I don't know how much that lawyer was aware of precedents that have been set in other towns with this same issue. Um, so, you know, if, they, if it works for those towns and it's not a problem, um, I don't see why it can't work here in this situation. Yeah, and, and having, you know, if for some reason this turns out not to be acceptable legally, then there are other approaches we can take that will achieve right. the end that we want. Mm -hmm. But this seems to us to be the best yeah. approach. Well, you know, I think at some point the AOE is making noise about this. Ask them the question, how many districts have these leases? Let them do the homework and come up with that number and then see what they need to do about it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. a good stretch. Yeah. So a few like tech minor things with the library. So yeah. we've written up a new, changed a couple things in the memorandum of understanding, yeah. um, which will need to be signed again by the trustees and also by the school board. Does that need to be done before the? I mean, like, what would just be like the proper steps to do that? I don't know when you're uh, meeting. Once next. again, I think you should do it with the existing board. I agree. Um, yeah. The so way I understand it is, even when a new board is elected for a union district, they don't completely take over until July 1st. We, the existing board remains in effect right. until June 30th, right. when we're then dissolved. Yep. So, but I would prefer that we do these things sooner rather than later, right. so there's no question. Well, I, I would hope that could be done and have both the trustees and the school board approve it before the lease, before we go before meet with the school board to, to... Right. I mean, I think we're about ready to, I think we're ready to do that. It's more a matter of like when to do it, like when you're meeting next. Our next meeting would be like Thursday the 25th, I believe. Okay. So I think we need to have a separate meeting. But if we're going to have a meeting the week of the 15th to sign the lease, mm -hmm then maybe we could do it the same night yeah. and we could warn it that way as yeah. two, you know, two separate meetings. I don't meetings. know what the OSSU is going to do about the lease and, you know, I, you know the, just from what has happened or my perceptions of, you know, them um, and, and their whole feeling towards what we're trying to do, uh, I do feel somewhat pessimistic and I'm kind of going from what, you know, at town meeting when we ask people who were there, you know, what do people want to see happen here with the school? And I think, um, you know, if the lease isn't going to work, then there, you know, there are other options that we, you know, people have been thinking about that we may have to explore to keep the school functioning um, the way the way it has. Um, you know, well, the big issue, here. Michael, is, of course, not just functioning the way it has, but making sure that the ownership is works in such a way that this, if, if the school is closed for some reason, it comes back to us the way we want it. Right. That's been one of the sticking points. And the articles, the default articles, put you know conditions, conditions on, on the yeah. return of any property. And yeah. Well, actually, the, um, the latest version I saw, uh, working on the default articles, uh, changed that somewhat. I don't know the if default it, articles? Yeah, if um, if you look at the new 6C that they added, and uh, which is where they're talking about the lease, if you look above that, they change one word. Um, Who did? The, the lease committee. I mean, the uh, oh, the, oh, the, the, articles the articles committee. committee. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so they did make a change there. That you, exactly. it's hard to notice because it's the, the one word change. But no, if, mm -hmm. the, if the articles is, as they're being worked on, the changes mm -hmm. happen. I think we're in good shape. Mm -hmm. But if we have to rely on the default articles, mm -hmm. we revert back to a language we don't yeah, like. Imagine if we don't pass the articles, then right. it goes right. back to the default right. articles, right. which are more mm -hmm. problematic or the more issues there. Yeah. So why would uh, whoever not want to go with the articles? Uh, you know what, Diana, this is completely uncharted territory. <laughs> <laughs> and, and people in other towns you know, as I said in the beginning, there was some discussion about a lease, a Woodbury bringing a leased building to the to the union, and some people don't like that idea at all. You know, yeah, sure. and yeah. it sounds like we've through discussion and we made good progress on that. But when you take it to the electorate, you never know what's going to happen at a public meeting like that. You you know, just the first organizational meeting. <laughs> 
got recessed, and nobody knew that was coming. <laughs> you just never know in these kind of circumstances. And the electorate is more than just the town of Woodbury. Absolutely. That's the, that's the big Actually, yeah. and next, next time there's a group meeting, hopefully everyone will get uh, personal notice in the mail, not just the people from Hardwick. Well, we can do that. We can do that. Do you want to, every, yeah, everybody can come to the meeting on the 22nd. Uh, should we be preparing a notice about that? Which one is that? You know what, I think we ought to need, I think we're, well, to be merciful to the, the electorate, we probably ought to be sure we know when all these meetings are scheduled you know and send out it? one notice. If there was a notice, <laughs> if there was a, if there was a notice that had all those dates that you were yeah. sharing with us, and even the ones that you aren't sure of, um, that would be, I can't see how that would not be helpful. Would just do a single mailing. Yeah, a single mailing. Actually, I think it would be helpful. No, that's what I mean. Yeah, really. Yeah. Well, why don't I get those dates nailed down and send them? Uh, how would we go about doing this then? Would that come out of your office, Diana? Well, I, I can present mailing. a list. I can provide a list of all the households on the uh, checklist. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who have a right to vote. Not all the property owners, just people on the checklist. And when uh, when Hardwick did their mass mailing a couple of weeks ago, OSSU did the actual That's work. That's a good point. That's I don't know point. what, I imagine they probably charged the Hardwick board for the postage. I'm sure they did. did. But you know what, that's another good point. Let me ask if they wouldn't do the same thing for Woodbury uh, sometime mm -hmm. soon, yeah. soon, mm -hmm. you know. Sooner the better, yeah. especially if these meetings are coming up. Well, Har yeah, Hardwick's got a budget meeting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll get to work on that. Okay. One more leave. technical question for me. <laughs> so the MOU with the school board yeah. that's written between the trustees and the school board, the school board is set to dissolve, if I'm correct, when... That's on July 1st. Right? Yeah. So then what will happen then to the MOU between the library trustees and the school board? You know, I don't remember, board? but the, I think the lease should refer to that. It, it'll be in the lease, so it should be an encumbrance that gets carried forward. Okay, and it will be spelled out that that gets carried forward. I mean, I'm recommending not attaching it, but, but referring to it. Okay. Saying there is a l agreement between the library and blah blah blah, and it can be found at or something. And it will incorporate it. And it, was, and it will continue. Yeah. Okay. Is okay. it an annual? No, it's a continued until changed, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, the MOU was, was like three, six years old, three years old. Can't remember. Yeah, yeah. three. But the date three was. Or yeah, it was not. 2014, I think, was the day on it that got signed. So that's my update. Okay. Perfect. Good. Thank Perfect. you. <laughs> Doing a good job. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. It's a moving target. It, like. it is. It yeah. is. Yeah. Good luck with that. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll keep you updated. Thank you. Okay. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Good night. <laughs>
was for just the bottom of Valley Lake Road, and, and that's what we were considering when um, the twenty grand. Bucks. Yeah, the guy from Pike came, um, and you know, since then it's been looking pretty obvious that we need to pay the whole part of the village there, in front of the town hall, the fire department, um, mm -hmm. and the post office. So this wasn't the whole. This wasn't the whole. This was just from the school parking lot. This um, is this one, okay. Yeah, down to Route 14. Okay. Um, so you could you could figure that probably for the the other part of the village there, that's another twenty thousand plus that all that pavement needs to be. Yeah, they're gonna have to remove, it up. grade yeah. it up. Yeah. So I have a question for you. Thinking mm -hmm. about it in front of the store. Yeah, half of it's ours, half of it's hers. You pay the whole thing, or do you just pay our half? Well, technically, it's a town. I mean, I guess we would need to figure that. It's sort of like I think the we need bill. to research that deed more because, like, right? I last time I looked at that deed, I think we own the property. Right. They may be able to use the property. I think they were they they've been given the okay to have um, two parking spaces there, and the. the the deed that the Zoning Board of Adjustment used was uh, something from Coleman Parker's day and it was actually like six or eight parking spots designated there on it. And you know, Diana was thinking that that really wasn't a deed, that was just a proposal. Didn't we look at a town square deed a number of years ago from 18 something for that property? You talking to me? Yeah. I remember you and I looked at one that... I got it right here. It was an old, old deed. So. Um, do we want to keep that paved, that park? What would it be like as, you know, with some good gravel down there? It would be horrible. It would be horrible. Okay, that's what I... That's it, what I it would wash out all the time. Yeah. It would be... Because okay. the way they've swaled that to get the water out back right. there, I would have think it would yeah. just erode it all. Yeah. Unless there was a stone line swale. But, uh, right, but yeah, yeah. I mean, that's where paving, people are parking. Yeah, I just don't... The, pl the plows okay. are tearing up the pavement. They're going to rip right. the gravel and the rocks right out of there. Paving of what? So Diana, we're talking about um, paving we're the trying to town parking lot. We're, we're, we're talking about all uh, coming up. paving in the village again, oh. um, and um, we have an estimate for paving the bottom section of Valley Lake Road from the mm -hmm. school down. Um, when the fellow from Pike came, that's what we were talking about, and it's become obvious over the last month, you know, since he's been here that. The, all of that pavement mm. in front of the town hall, the fire station. Because mm. we're going to have some cement and patching we're going to have right. to do this summer it's just so really, they can get through. It's mm. in really rough shape. Um, so there's giant craters. So, but Brian had just asked, well, do, do the people in the new old store, the building, there, <laughs> the apartment building, we'll call it, um, do they own part of that? No, they don't. And I don't think I they don't do. believe they do yeah. for when you <laughs> heard this, this before. This is what it says. Mm -hmm. And I actually, you know, typed it. Wow. That's old. What's the date on that thing? 1842, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. July 20th, July 9th. He said he, I, Israel Jackson of Monroe, this is back when it was Monroe, was in the county of Washington, state of Vermont, for the consideration of $1 paid to me by the town of Monroe in the county of Washington and state aforesaid, the receipt whereof I hereby acknowledge. Have demise leased, demise leased, and to firm let, and do hereby demise lease and to firm let to said town of Monroe a certain piece or parcel of land situated in Monroe aforesaid, being part of lot 55 in the Jane Survey, so called, in said town, and all that part of lot now occupied as the site of a townhouse thereon recently erected. Thence commencing at the southeasterly corner of said townhouse, southerly in a line with the front of said house, five and a half rods there. Anyways, it goes on with some meets and bounds. Um, that's where the townhouse to the place of beginning with a privilege to travel and pass around the townhouse for the purpose of repairing the same to be occupied by said town for the purpose of a townhouse and common adjacent there too and for no other purpose whatever and the same to revert to me and my heirs which would be the current landowners mm -hmm. whenever it shall cease to be occupied by the town for the purpose aforesaid and for the consideration aforesaid I hereby covenant and agree that no building shall be erected on the land which I own south of the townhouse 
within 16 feet of that conveyed by this leaf. So your piece must have been somehow here they, at some point. Somehow too. they broke the fire station out because that's all part of that original yeah, town so square yeah, property. So, so I don't know how that came that to be. Was, well, he did within six. He owned land within 16 feet. So whatever. So that must have been part of uh, Mr. Jackson's land at yeah. one time too. Mm -hmm. So you know we looked at. I mean, you can read these meets and bounds, but we do have a survey where a surveyor actually Said laid what, them what out. Was what? Yeah. Yeah. And um, so the deal is, it's owned by the town, and as long as it's continued to use as yeah, the town the, square and the town the hall, town which hall we have. And, the, and the common, what they call Your which town is, common. Yeah. You know, there used to be an island there, yep. a round one with a gazebo and things like that. And that's been the historic use since I've right. lived here. We've always maintained right. it. We've always. Yeah used it as such. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's only been more recently where we've had a little yeah. friction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, in order for us to do the paving on Valley Lake Road and in, in front of the village buildings, um, that's all on the town's bill. There's no right. the paving right. There's no paving cover mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, what but I, you don't have a estimate for around. I don't have an estimate. And I, I mentioned to the person um, from Pike, who came and gave us the, this original estimate of, you know, if he could come back or if he was going to had a plan to be passing through town, if we could meet with him and show him the rest and get an estimate from him um, mm -hmm. for the, the whole project. And he had mentioned to me before that, that, well, you know, if it was Pike doing the work, and, we, you know, we would have to put this out to bid, so yeah. it might not necessarily be Pike that was doing it, but if they were doing it, um, they would want to try to schedule it for a time when they're doing something else somewhere nearby, because it's, it's such a small, small project. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the other smaller paving companies, you know, it might, that might not be an issue, mm -hmm. but, and, yeah. and it's more of a, a, a scheduling issue than, than the fact of whether, yes or no, they would, because we, we may need to, there's big enough holes, we may need to hire them to patch. Right. In the meantime. Yeah, because we can't, from what I'm seeing, yeah. it's going to be horrible when that yeah. comes up yeah. and we wash mm -hmm. that driveway out. There's not going to, there's going to be holes you could throw this table in, mm -hmm. yeah. which we may need to have. I don't know if the town can patch that or if you might want them to come I, in. I think we could probably, the town could probably come up with some kind of temporary Cold patch for that. Yeah. yeah, coal wouldn't stay. You're going to need mm -hmm. something. Uh, if, maybe if there was something a little more... Or some stone underneath and then right. cold yeah I just or I don't need it mm -hmm. just don't think it should come right up that's all we're gonna yes. put time and money right. into mm -hmm. it right. yeah well, um, so I was sort of thinking that you know we'll try to get an estimate for mm -hmm. both the bottom of Valley yep. Lake Road and, and uh, we should give that a little street name or something so we could call it something but um, <laughs> hmm. we'll call it the town what was it common town Main Street yeah <laughs> so, that's what the old firehouse uh, radio antenna license said. <laughs> I had to fix it. The, like, where's that? <laughs> the thing with uh, paving the bottom of Valley Lake Road that really can't happen this summer. But what you know, the the timeline that we're looking at with that is that this summer, um, if we get this grant um, through the Regional Planning Commission for the design work um, for the two um, erosion components of of this project. Um, you know, the design will happen this summer, and then we will go after um, grants to do the, hopefully do the implementing next summer. So as soon as we could really plan on doing the paving at the bottom of Valley Lo Lake Road is next summer. Two summers. Right. But if we had an idea of how much it might cost, then we can kind of protect what we have in our paving fund. <coughs> and or add some more to it. Well, I'm thinking we're mainly right. to be a little more proactive because we know yeah. these things got to be done. Right. We've got to put more money into it. We probably need to it. put some money yeah. in there to yeah. deal with it because we yeah. know what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we could we could budget in some money for in the fiscal year 2021. Because we've been pretty tight with our paving. Yeah. Yeah. It's, we're, we're kind we're of at the, at the we can't we can't have to kind of do something about it. We've got to spend right. some money. Yeah. yeah. We so, rode that horse as far as it'll go, yeah, as yeah. they say. <laughs> yeah. So, so what we'll need to figure out, you know, the this paving grant um, application needs to be sent in April fifteenth. Mm. Um, we're going to be meeting with Shauna Clifford on April third to go over the town, you know, the state VTRANS, the budget that we do every year. Um, I'd like to have the the grant's pretty simple. Grant application is pretty simple. 
um, and we have the figures that we need to put on it for the upper cabin room. Um, yeah. And then we'll just have to figure out, um, probably soon after that application goes in, right. how much money we're going to want to be fronted from, from Swenson Quarry right. and how we're going to pay it back. Because those prices could change when we get the actual bid right, back. Right. The, and the, the representative from Pike said that you know the estimate that he gave us is high. He likes to estimate high. So you're prepared. So you're prepared. Um, and if it costs less, then you know, great. Um, and you know another we'll the package to present to Swenson. Right, right. What we can live with. <laughs> that hundred and seventy-five thousand that you mentioned is that like uh, one that's, time that's every the, five years or once a year? Or? That's the maximum amount that VTrans can give a town. A municipality for a paving grant for but like for, for a, a year or well forever? yeah there is a cycle so you know mm -hmm. um, you know if we did it every year chances are we wouldn't get, get the grant when we apply. <laughs> a lot of those grants work too is once you've got one you go to the bottom yeah, of the list yeah, for the next uh -huh. one right. and you move yeah. your way up is oh. so yeah. so when they if they have more money you you'll mm -hmm. get further mm -hmm. down then you can move up every yeah, year so three or four years ago we did get a mm -hmm. paving grant mm -hmm. we did the lower cabin road mm -hmm. um, and we're kind of up on top of the mm -hmm. list now to get mm -hmm. what Shana Clifford told me. So it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty much a, a shoe in that we would mm -hmm. uh, be awarded the grant. Yeah. Yeah. So we should start pathway. to work on it at the very least to yeah. see if we can get the grant. Yeah. Right. It's a very simple yeah. fact to have it in so two pages. Great. Basically, two pages. Okay. Yep. Oh, all right. So, yeah. it's it's very simple. Yep. Um, you know. You know. Um, so I just, anyway, pretty much, I pretty much have the information to put this together. Um, so now that I have the the formal estimate from Pike. So uh, so okay so. We should do this, it sounds like. We're, we're I'm a yes for I'm on board, yeah. All right, okay. All right. Um, so what we'll try to do, um, let's see, we get to meet one more time before this has to be in. And so probably we'll give it to Sean on April 3rd. But what I'd like us to do um, uh, at our next meeting, um, I'll have the application filled out. Um, and then let's just, and hopefully, um, Try to get an estimate for the village from Pike, so we know how much that's going to cost. Um, so we have that figure to work with, um, and then just figure out how much. Um, you know, we know that the paving grant will pay for 175,000. So you know, if we want to hang on to what we have in the paving fund right now, then um, mm. the difference will be just short of a hundred thousand mm. um, dollars. That Swenson would need to forward the town, um, and then we would have to work out some kind of. It sounds like a ten or fifteen year kind of payment schedule. Yeah. So there's no, so there's no option to just pave up to the first road, like was the original it's, plan. It's um, when when we looked at the road um, with uh, with the fellow from Pike and and Greg Parkers was with us. The pavement would end right on a very steep incline, mm -hmm. um, and both of them they felt all washed down. that um, th that that wouldn't be a good situation for people using the road, mm -hmm. um, um, up or down, mm -hmm. and that um, there's the chance that that you know any kind of water running down is going to go underneath mm -hmm. the pavement. You know, it's just going to break out pretty quickly. Um, so. Um, but if it had been done, you know, three years ago or so, when it no, first it would, came it would up, have it still would have been, would have been the same problem. Would have had to go farther. Probably, you know, then if that was, um, you know, the thought um, with with having it end on that steep incline, it would have been probably better to go up to the crest of the mm -hmm. hill. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that's my thinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, that never even got discussed. But was there, was there any um, any? Thought given to hiring an engineer, or did Shauna and Pike think they just well? The, the fellow from the Pike, you know, obviously it's hard to really look at the road base when it's covered yeah, with ice yeah. and snow, but, the um, full of snow. Yeah. but that that road is in 
really good shape, and it, mm -hmm. there's no erosion problems with it. Mm -hmm. You know, the road crew did major ditching and mm -hmm. culvert work on mm -hmm. it um, a few years ago, um, and the the road is wide enough. There's, mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be. Mm -hmm. We don't have any mud up there in the spring. There's anymore. no mud there at all. No, the road's in really good shape. Even on so the upper part. The upper part can be bad, but the, the hill's well, not bad. Once you get once you get over the once crest, you're over of the crest, you're on your own. Yeah, yeah. then then it's it a different that's story. That's right. right. But um, the road, mm -hmm. the basic, you know, this side, the mm -hmm. western side of that. So nobody sure. thought that you needed an engineer. I guess. No, okay. and there's no, you know, with the road inventory, there's no issue mm -hmm. with um, mm -hmm. um, erosion on that mm -hmm. road. Um, but the, of course, most of it isn't hydrologically connected, so they aren't really all that worried about mm -hmm. it. But, yeah. but the road seems to hold up pretty well. Um, yeah, it's been really good. Through the and the positive side on one end of it is, if it's paved, they can run year-round as far mm -hmm. as and not be down right, for right, mud right. season for a month, right. which would increase the amount of stone that gets taken out and increase our mm -hmm. monies that we, in mm -hmm. turn, get paid for. for well, I mean, that's what, that's what the whole project was for to begin yeah. with, was right. so that they didn't have to uh, miss some days right. in mud right. season. I don't right. know how much they actually <coughs> miss, but they, don't they miss probably a lot. make, a, make up for it. Year they they usually have an arrangement, you know, like... Mm -hmm. um, the road is posted now, but you know it's going to freeze tonight, and yeah, so they, they have an understanding of having the trucks ready mm -hmm. there. So they're you know they might try to get two runs in before yeah. things soften mm -hmm. up, and um, mm -hmm. so yeah, they they don't miss a they miss some, but uh, they've, they've been able to work around it, um, mm -hmm. trying to get out in the morning. Uh, all right, so we'll try to have some more figures for next time, and. Um, but, um, you know, we'll go ahead with the grant application um, and then just, um, I think I'd like to make sure that um, Pike is okay with whatever it looks like we're going to want to have for terms with them and, and then fronting the money because mm -hmm. I'm sure Bob will have to check with whoever the owners are of Swenson Quarry at right. this point. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure that they're okay with it before we... Um, you know, make a solid commitment. With, with, mm -hmm. I mean, if we get the application, we get the award, and it doesn't look like it's going to work, we can just pull out the money. Yeah, right. Money will get used mm -hmm. somewhere mm -hmm. else. Yeah. So. yeah, get the app in now. Yeah. And yeah. So, um, would someone do an RFP? There is an RFP that Skip has already prepared for oh, us. Oh, nice. It's just kind of sitting there waiting. Oh, yeah. nice. Great. He's our local RFP consultant. Yeah. <laughs> RFP, yeah. <laughs> he's just cranking so, them out. Yeah. He's good at it. Yeah. That policies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got those. You gotta have those now. Yeah. And the you know the payment there was special a special mix of payment for the lower right. part and it'll be the same mm. mix yeah, for, mm -hmm. for the whole thing because mm -hmm. of the trucks that are you know the granite mm -hmm. trucks coming down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't have any problems on the bottom half of it, do we? What's no. paved there now? So, so far so so there. far so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, yeah. Um, so okay. All right, so we'll we'll Keep moving this. forward, and like yep. I said, we'll have to do some patching on the downtown. Yeah, yeah. going to have to get patched in some form. Yeah, yeah. some form. Yeah. There's some yeah. tank traps. Once, uh, once it's possible the, if we're having the top done, maybe they, maybe they can come down and do some patching there somewhere. on the way through. Or maybe, something. yeah, maybe they could with some leftover mm -hmm. leftover stuff yeah. at night or something. Right in here. Dump it in that hole. Yeah, dump it, dump the extra right in the roller over it. Yeah. So yeah, that might be a good way to get some patching done down mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. It'll mm -hmm. reduce rate as well yeah. and get yeah. some good patching yeah. done. One way or the other, we'll <coughs> patch yeah. it up so it's usable until we can get it. Yeah, it was looking pretty ugly last summer over there. Of yeah, there was some cold pack. You should take a walk across there now. It's yeah, in, it's in rough shape. Yeah. There's one you can throw this table in. It's, it's in rough shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The more. So, is it my turn yet? I don't Finally, want to get yes, done before. And, and no, no, one's, <laughs> no one's come no in to that, so go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't. Before I don't somebody know. comes in. I was very pleased with the fact that I managed to get the, both of the landowner's signatures wow. on that. I know. Fantastic. One of the landowners actually came to my house and gave he me took a care signature. Of wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then I was I sent it to the wrong agency. So oh boy, okay. I lost a week. Okay. <laughs> God. Fair enough. But anyways, I sent it to Linda you know, Elliot instead of Lauren Oates. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. But today I got it off to her and mm -hmm. so uh, the attorney uh, 
the attorney has uh, Sarah Field has had someone in here doing the time working on the title search, okay. and uh, hopefully and those two pieces will be. Those are the final the last two ones. pieces, yeah. right? For the. Yeah. This. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it would be. I don't know if Lauren has any sense of, you know, once. FEMA receives that, how long it's going to take? Yeah, time? the only thing she has told me is that they're anxious to get it done because mm. it's like the one of the last of their out. Irene um, grants that they have hanging mm. out. So, mm -hmm. and they know we want to do it this summer. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, have we thought any more about rebuilding the stream banks after this is done? There's a. Be, well, I saw yeah. the thing for fifty thousand dollars, and it right. drove me nuts to spend that kind of well, money. Well, the twenty-five thousand dollars was just for the engineering. I know, That's and I, like you know, and he said today. it probably wouldn't yeah. be. You know, they kind of tend to plump things out. It'll cost what it costs. Right, and the engineering will cover. The engineering design will also cover all the permitting stuff. That yeah, and it shouldn't. Happen. This shouldn't be. I mean, he said he put it something like four thousand dollars in there. For a federal permit, but I find that highly yeah. unlikely. Why would we need a federal permit? Yeah, I don't yeah. see that. Yeah, they have a lake right. uh, stream permit for Vermont. Yeah, yeah. No. Stream we'll need permit. some permits because we know so, uh, we're dealing with the. You just need the, the, the bank of the stream. Right, the stream right. alteration. We've gotten just the dry a, before. Yeah, those are pretty yeah. easy. This yeah. just yeah. the stream alteration. The guy, yeah. the stream alteration engineer, has been yeah. involved in all the meetings. Federal permit, not in a federal. Right. Yeah. So. So yeah. And I did get a, a very informal estimate from Dana Gravel, and the estimate that the, our engineer threw out was about twice that. But I finally found that there is a number above which FEMA would not go, and we're not even close to that. So, <laughs> yeah. So their whatever their magic formula is, we're not there yet. I stopped guessing with FEMA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of scratched yeah, my head with those. Cost for mm -hmm. those design. I mean, like it's the same thing with the uh, Kingsbury branch with that, with that, you know, the design mm -hmm. yeah. for that. The Instead of hiring was, the guy to design it, just have Dana come out and do it. <laughs> right, right. Cost you, yeah, and you yeah. can't get a permit. That's what we're yeah. facing That's with fire station stuff. Yeah. You can't do anything until mm -hmm. yeah. somebody designs mm -hmm. it and yeah. you got to pay for that and then they'll mm -hmm. send it in and they'll approve mm -hmm. it and then you can do it. <laughs> <sighs> You, know, you sort of wonder, you know, has this been set up and you don't know why it costs so much. I can tell you why. So these guys have Do it at night when nobody's around. <laughs> you remember what it used to look like? Anything else as far as town <coughs> Yeah, I can't think of anything special. Okay. We got a, we're up to like 60 dog licenses now. Mm -hmm. After last year, we had almost 200. So we had a bit of a rush tonight. I did about 12 or so, Laura, so I left those for you to finish Yeehaw. up tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we put out a lot of notices and we'll just see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I am going to come in Saturday. Okay, so we're going to be open Saturday morning for some of those last minute people. And Monday, next Monday, the 1st, will still be in time, mm -hmm. so maybe mm -hmm. next Monday night we'll get more and mm -hmm. encourage people to just send their checks or put their checks in the drop box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It shouldn't be so hard. No. But <laughs> it is. You're dealing with people. <laughs> but if we don't push them on the deadline, then there's You're nothing to push them right. on. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. like, okay, the difference in the price is maybe $4. Right. Yeah, <laughs> Not that big a deal, but they're just really nice. Otherwise, we send Kim Silk. <laughs> Go get him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, back to the highway report. Highway report. Uh, so, the next item on the agenda is the road erosion inventory, which um, has. Which you sent me a copy of. Yeah. I and I have some paper copies here. Oh, first of all, well, let's say this here. Um, so. This was a inventory um, that was done by the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. It's part of the Municipal Roads General Permit. Um, every town, every municipality is required to ha have a road erosion inventory done um, to move forward with uh, you know, improving the roads, all the hydrologically connected segments of road um, for the Municipal Roads General Permit. Um, 
So they put together a report. I have paper copies if you want to okay, just sure. look at them all. Yeah. One of them has a lot of writing in it. You I want your one writing. writing. <laughs> this one doesn't, and you're welcome to keep it because I know you like paper copies better than better than computer. computer yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Um, so this rates kind of the. Yeah. So level of problem uh, on that list at the at the end of that report. Um, the, most of the report is pretty much giving you an update on what? The, the basics of the, the yeah. initial road snow permit and what's required, timelines, um, and then there is some pie charts, bar graphs, uh, kind of breaking down uh, the Woodbury's roads and, and um, you know what meets and what so doesn't. We get a big meet. segment of red. Yeah, and and a, a majority of the red um, is basically just uh, crowning and berm work on the roads. Um, so, um, but what, um, now that the inventory is done, um, what um, we need to do next, um, and I'm working with Greg on this, um, we need to address the, all of the pri very high priority sites. Um, which are these? Which are those, yeah, there are 25 of them that have been, um, you know, designated by um, the inventory. We have five years to remedy those. So um, what we need to come up so with this, is this list right here. Yeah, it's that first column right there. Um, we need to come up with a five-year plan to have all of those completed um, by the end of the five years. Um, we already have five of them done. Mm -hmm. So the, this, this inventory was started in the late summer of 2017, um, and it was completed um, last year. Um, so some of these things that, that you know were originally inventory we've already repaired. Um, uh -huh. I think I wrote down like Foster Hill Road, the upper part of Foster Hill Road. We did the work on that through uh, the Municipal Roads General Permit Grants and Aid Project. Um, those three segments. Right there when you see a three, that's three places. That's three, like that's three okay. segments. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. A three hydrologically connected segments and the segment is roughly 328 feet. Okay. Um, so um, the three under Foster Hill Road, that we can check that offer list. We've done that already. Um, that was done um, and approved um, last year. Um, King Pond Road, there are two sections on King Pond Road. Those were done this summer before. So those are, those are so there's five. Um, and then um, I don't think Nichols, the road, I think it's just a town highway number. I'm not sure which is the Nichols. Um, but that those um, that was done last year too. Um, that's probably in the high, the very high section, one of these town highways. That I don't know the number for the town highway up there. Um, it's a class four road, but um, basically that that whole section has been um, uh, meets meets the standards now. That was worked on last summer. So we have about twenty of them. Um, and we have two. There's two. Um, sources of funding to help pay for for the work. One is the grants and aids, um, which is done through the Regional Planning Commission and is part of the Miss Rose General Permit. Um, that's a, a grant application that we have applied for twice and, and received money. There's it it's and it's not a competitive grant. There's basically there's a certain amount of money, it's around fourteen thousand um, dollars that uh, we receive in that grant and then there's a 20 percent town match so it's roughly around seventeen thousand dollars uh, counting the town match that um, the um, town match is in kind it's in kind we yeah. basically all we the town does all the work on the roads and then you know we add up the the equipment rates the um, hourly rate for the crew working on it and the materials um, and then um, the grant pays for eighty percent of that so is all this work ditching? Most of the work, like on Foster Hill Road, um, it was ditching. Um, there were it doesn't say in this report. It what, doesn't say okay. in the report. But what happens is, going forward, you know, we'll be looking at these high priority sites. The Regional Planning Commission already has put together what are called best management practices. What needs to be done to uh, put this segment of road up to the standards um, that are required through the general permit that will, you know, theoretically uh, eliminate the erosion issues. Um, because it seems like some of it was just crowning when they grade, right. in the summer grading to really be a majority, thoughtful in those areas. A majority of this is, is just crowning and um, 
There's a bar graph in that report um, uh, that pretty much talks about. This is every road in town. <laughs> Well, that's, that's, yeah, well, that's, well, that's exactly the point I'm, I'm raising. There's something yeah. on every road. Because yeah. yeah. we're already yeah. doing maintenance yeah. on all right. these roads. Yeah. How much of this can we handle just in regular, just in regular yeah. if we grade it correctly so or something? So most of what you see in the medium priority, that's all uh, crowning. And, yeah. and see, crowning, you should be able to resolve that. With a grader. With, with a grader, when you grade it. And some of them are, are berm issues, which is also usually a yeah, greater. greater. That's from, from right. edge build up. Right. Okay. See, and that's all stuff they should be able to do. Right. And, um, you know, I, I asked the folks at the Regional Planning Commission when I met with them if, you know, if there could be a workshop for the road crew yeah. for that. And they're planning to do that through the um, local roads. I was going to um, ask you that if that was something yeah. that Greg that, could go so, to. And yeah, actually, say, yeah. This is what we want you to do. And yeah. This is how you do it, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to have it. Both Gregs go to it, um, mm -hmm. actually, so that they both know. And, and maybe you know whoever else might be running. That would just be a really good use of money we're already spending. Just right. make sure yeah. when you yeah. grade a section of road that you fix. Yeah, and it this. might require. I've seen your husband in the grader a bit. Yeah, this he's winter. been he's been mm -hmm. pushing back like the he, snow banks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, looks like he may be another grader yeah. operator. Yeah. that's kind of the thinking ahead yeah. part. Yeah, um, yeah. So a lot of it is just. Uh, crowns and burns, um, especially when you look at the me this medium section. Mm -hmm. um, right. Is there anything in here about culverts? Is Ye yeah. Some of this um, does address culverts. Yeah, right? it does address culverts. Uh, most of it is is ditching and uh, just uh, turnoffs for, you know, um, for water running down through the ditches. You know, getting it off, you know, off the road. Um, so, um, and that that's pretty much the ditching. Part the culverts, the uh, lining the culverts of, is a really small piece of the very problem. small, yeah, yeah it's a very small piece. So yeah. once he goes up and say he goes up and spends a day doing grading Westwoodbury, you mm -hmm. can call somebody and say, hey, go check out Westwoodbury, and you can eliminate these. We can do that. Yes, yeah, so yeah. pull these, pull yeah. the berms off, get the road crown, clean yeah. out your clean outs. And okay, so they go check. Yeah, going. <clears throat> yeah, going ahead. There will be um, the agency of natural resources will have a. Uh, kind of a website portal with um, all, all of the roads from this inventory are going to be listed in there. When we do them, we go on to it, um, you know, we may have to send photos. I don't know whether we need to have someone come and approve what was done, um, mm -hmm. but basically there's a way of reporting in on what's been done. Probably um, initially they'll come out and see just to make sure we're right, doing it right or right. something, but yeah. maybe they'll get where they trust us after a while. <laughs> Right, or whether photographs would do it, um, yeah. you know, that's a big part of it. Is before and after photographs are part of yeah. part of these projects. Um, so Greg and I have met once. We're, we're going to work out a five-year plan here, um, and um, the, the other uh, money source uh, is the Better Roads, um, and that's a fall. You would apply for a grant in the fall, and usually during the winter you find out. Whether you would get it or not, that is competitive. Um, that would be for a particular problem area, right? Yeah, that would that would be thing. more the we could we could get more money for um, like there's one area at the bottom of uh, Charter Hill and the barter bottom of um, Scribner. Scribner, yeah. Yep. Those the four segments that come down to where the brook is, those are all high priority. So that that would be a bigger project. That um, probably would be more appropriate for a better yeah. road. And like I see in the county road, is that by Greenwood where that Greenwood um, and their county come? Because that's all washed out again. Yeah, there's. We lost a third of the road this winter. Yeah, right. They're going to have yeah. to come fix right. it. Right, I'm not sure. Because I know exactly that's washer. It washes all that gravel into the lake every time it rains. Yeah. They've provided us with a large map, which I didn't bother bringing down. Sure. Yeah. You, you open it up and there's no room for anybody. Um, mm -hmm. But if you blow up the um, digital version that I sent, oh, you, which is in the report, folder. Okay. You can see um, it marks the, that out. Yeah, it's okay. marked. Cool. Yeah. I didn't get a lot of time to study it. So. Right. No. No. I think I. And just, then I had those questions, which you answered. Is, is yeah. these are the priority lists? Yeah. And yeah. So um, that big map, I think we'll probably put it up down in the uh, little office at the town garage and, and work on it from there. Mm -hmm. um, so um, yeah. So I think you know by the. <clears throat> And, of course, the Regional Planning Commission would like that five-year plan sometime in April. So I'm going to tr try to have it done um, by our next select board meeting so I can just share it with, with you guys. Um, you know, Greg, Greg and I will sit down. And we've already got ideas. It's more, I think what we're, we're going to try to do is um, figure out a five-year schedule where we can take advantage of 
the, this, the grant money so that um, we can get the state to help pay for as much of this as we can, um, yeah. especially as you know we're, we're being required to do it. And part of the catch with some of these, you know, they're like um, the bottom of Sheridan Hill Road. The two bottom segments segments are the only parts that are considered hydrologically connected, mm -hmm. but the water runs down from the hill up above. Um, yeah. So. To solve the problem at the bottom, you kind of got to deal with the, the water at the top. same yep. time. And I'm hoping that the better roads grants might, you know, they might actually consider that as the reality of what the situation is. Um, um, and there are some, there are some culverts, um, and there are some turnouts, and there have been issues with the landowners there um, yep. about the gravel. The, the gravel from the road running out onto their property. So whatever we do, we've got to. Take that into consideration too. It's not fair to the property owners. Yeah, not filling in there long. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so and Charter Hill is definitely one that uh, Greg would really like to remedy as as soon as possible. Um, the whole thing, you know, the whole hill. Um, so, um, and, you know, on some of it, we you know, um, like when we did the part of uh, Valley Lake Road. There were the segments that were hydrologically connected, but the runoff came from segments up above. So the ditching work and the culverts and the turnouts started above. But you know, we the town paid for that, um, and it's not a, you know, it's not an astronomical amount, but it, it is. Um, yeah, we're but it's still, it's part yeah. of. It. And again, I go back to that. We just should be really maximizing the money we're already spending right. to really uh, get them to. You know, if they're out on a piece of road, spend the extra few hours to, when you're over there grading it to right. fix the problem. Don't right. just hurry in. Yeah, and some of the crowding issue is uh, will require additional gravel. Some gravel, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's where I'm not an expert, but I, I right. don't. Neither am I. Yeah. yeah, I just know that like berms and crown, yeah. some of the crowning, make sure you spend the time needed yeah. to get that fixed. Because then we, it's done, and we don't have, yeah, you know, it's going to wash. You're going to have to fix it every year, right? Just, we don't want you hurrying through this. Get, yeah. you know, I understand in the spring you got to hurry through and mm -hmm. kind of clean up, but then at some point right. you got to say, today we're grading right. this much road, and we're going to do it right. Right. Yeah. Just to maximize what we're already spending. Yeah. So another part of you know that something that, w that we're going to need to work on is uh, the class four roads because those now are. Um, also considered just as much as class three roads um, for any erosion problems. You know, in the past, towns were not responsible for maintaining those roads, but they were responsible for culverts and bridges. Mm -hmm. And now, um, with, the, with this municipal road general permit, towns are also responsible for the erosion from the class four roads. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have, like the bottom of Blueberry Hill. Um, yeah. Sure, if you know where that is. I know where it is. Yep, yep. Bottom yep. of Blueberry, two segments of the very bottom of that road, Class Four road, are on the high priority list. They run right into that stream there. So, um, but there are other, and that road has a number of households up above. Yep. You know, it's a hell of a road. You know, but it's um, so we're going to need to deal with those segments. But there are other Class Four roads that people haven't driven on for fifty or more years. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, I think we're going to want to consider um, reclassifying those as trails. Um, they're still owned by the town. They're still, you know, still can be used, but according to the the terms of the uh, general permit, the town is not responsible for the erosion on them. Um, so I think you know we're going to want to look at class four roads. Which ones are actually used? Um, which ones are not used? Which um, and, you know, Which ones would cost us a fortune to to, to, to keep maintain? Up, to maintain, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah and I'd want to really look at what uh, if it was made a trail could it ever be made a road again. Right. Because I'm a big fan right. of keeping keeping road something inventory we yeah. have to yeah. keep access to those for right. the property right. owners. Mm -hmm. But if, if if it's a simple matter, call it a trail versus calling it a road, right. then you okay. can turn it back into road to save money on that. Makes sense, but right. uh -huh. yeah, you know, like the road um, that goes up to. The Cata Town Line um, on the Nichols Pond Road. Um, that road was pretty close to being untravelable, and, and, uh, and they fixed it up. They fixed it up um, last year, and it is a road that gets used some. Uh, it's kind of a shortcut between Cata and Hardwick. Um, yeah, probably more than you'd realize. No, quite quite a, a lot, bit. Yeah, lot of traffic on that road. <clears throat> yeah, there's quite a bit of traffic on it. Um, you know, another road that we talked about last year is 
what's known locally as the Ho Chi Minh Trail. It's from um, County Road up over the ridge down into West Woodbury. Kurt Seaman's Pond yeah. there, not that, Seaman's Pond, but Slayton Pond. Yeah, that road is, yeah, the, whole, yeah. Yeah, the whole road is, is on the high, <coughs> it's high priority list. Right. Um, Nobody drives on it, but Nobody, as long you as you maintain your right to put a road back there, you can call it a trail. Right. That's yeah. There's a house nope. up there a little ways, right? People drive on no. it. Do they drive on it? Oh, yeah. There's a they camp. Oh, camp. the mudders. So they're camp. adding to our wash problem. <laughs> that road is totally undrivable unless you have a, a four wheel four wheel four wheel drive. Or, you know, even ATVs now would be challenged to do. I've never even been up off to go for a hike. The oh. only thing about that is the people that came and talked about that when you guys had the meeting, you did right. say that if you had... Well, they were they were worried that we were going to say no ATV. Close it down. Close yeah. it down, yeah. And that's not the, that wasn't the issue. My my thought, I mean, that's a class four road that basically is, is almost the whole road, um, probably two plus miles worth is on the, in the high... In the high priority. High priority listing. Which could be a lot of spent money for nothing. Yeah. But what sucks is it's still a road correct it's still gonna have water problems it's well, just in a different spot on the right. list last, you gotta last year, it or not. no last year the, the the vermont youth conservation corps put like 42 bars mm -hmm. into wow. that into that room um how long they'll remain functioning bars with the kind of um use, traffic yeah. that they get with those you know especially the you know the mud bogger rigs that um those mm -hmm. trucks just chew the road right up um so, um, you know, I was hoping to meet at some point with this crew that came in and, you know, they had expressed a willingness to maintain that road. So those bars are there and right now they're, they're functioning to take, you know, a segment of, rather than letting the, road, the water continue all the way down a section of hill, the bars do divert it off. Um, so that, you know, there's a short section where the water will go off and then yeah. the water will pick up again on the next yeah, section. Another little cut off. Yeah, another bar. They put, they put, there's 42 bars there's, um, and there's some places where it was impossible to do that because the erosion has channeled the road it's just rock. so much there's no place to... It's just rock. Yeah, yeah it's like it's County rock. Road down past my house, some of that's just rocks. Just rock now, yeah. Rock. yeah. yeah. So, I think, we, you know, the inventory will indicate that um, the, and so we need to look at which roads are getting used um, by vehicle traffic, which roads are getting used by ETVs, um, and you know, if there are erosion problems on those roads, do we want to reclassify them as trails so that the town isn't responsible for them and, and just let the use continue? Um, and then there are other class four roads that where any kind of use might really be a problem and maybe we want to restrict um, traffic on those. Um, any any kind of vehicle traffic. Um, yeah, I guess we'd have to walk them and see. Uh, and look yeah, at them, yeah, judge yeah. them. Yeah. In the, the Buck Lake Road section that we close off now in the summer. Um, that's a, they reclassify that as a trail. That's a trail now, and beyond the beyond the um, Fish and Wildlife Camp to the Hardwick Town Line or On Stratton Road. Yeah. The Stratton Road. Um, you know, that is a very sensitive area, I and mean, then the road pretty much ends in a beaver pond at this point, so there, you know, there really isn't any allowable, to, you know, it's, traffic can't be on it. Um, so they're but like Paul, I'm not in favor of losing those roads. I no, just, they, yeah, they're, they're trail. You never know, yeah. 20, 30 years from now, years want to build a house yeah. out there. They're, they're, Larry Rossi always said, you never know what's going to yeah. happen. When they're a trail, the town yeah. still owns the road. The right you can make it yeah. back. So we can make it back to if you throw it up, discontinue it. Then um then it's lost. That's oh, Great, thank you. Oh, thank Sorry, you very Brian. much. Damn. <laughs> Nothing for you. That's the way it happens at the house. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Good, night. Good night. Good night. So um yeah. So if the road's discontinued then it reverts back to the property. The property which I don't I'm not a big fan of doing right. that. Yeah. There are a couple, there are some class four roads that basically serve as someone's driveway. Yep. There are a few of them. Um, but the want? same thing, we don't know down the road, right. 100 years from now, there could be a housing development out right. there that needs the access. Right. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's not yeah, always going to be. Because I just think about property owners, because I know down below me, there's a couple property owners that if you mm -hmm. were to, I don't think there's a contemplation of throwing that road up, but if you did, now they have no access. Right. Yeah. You know. 
So, so you know, just getting late. That's <coughs> just a discussion that you know. Yep. We'll, yeah. I'd, I'd like to kind of work out, you know, together. You have to pick and choose them one at a time. Go probably go walk some of them yep. just to see right. if it's. Yeah, I'm interested in yeah. walking that one up by Steve. I've never been up there, by so Steve, yeah, awesome. I would take a walk. What, of course, when it dries out in three months. Yeah. Yeah. Wait till wait till the snow's gone. <laughs> It'll be a or or wait till the. Water is running down it. Uh, Borrow your neighbor's snowmobile. Head up. Yeah, I got yeah. one too. <laughs> I, mean, I, I remember walking that road, let's say 20, maybe more than 20 years ago, and it was still a pretty decent road. Um, and then I walked it last year, and I was really yeah, surprised. Yeah, just choose it up and get them. Yeah. I was, I was really, yeah. Yep. Pave it. Yes, yeah. pave it. Yeah, yeah. Pave our class for <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll hold it. $500,000. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure some people in West Woodbury would love to have that be a functioning road. Yeah, so I was wondering if there wasn't some way to get I always wanted a road because yeah. they're going over there for fire protection. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it a is. a long ride. Medical calls, long ride. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so there'll be more about this inventory, and, and uh, ho I hope to have a five year plan for us to look at um, for the, for the uh, very high priority roads. Um, I'm going to see if maybe they can't make us a smaller map, but, you know, I mean, the ones that are in I'll that pull the one up. report are, you know, it's totally, a, it, you can't really yeah, Sometimes I probably am interested in getting together with Greg and learning what mm -hmm. they do and mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. thought process and just yeah. for my own yep. knowledge. Yeah. So when I start getting phone calls, I yep. understand yep. Mm -hmm. the issue better. Right. Yep. So I'll probably um, talk, I can just talk to him directly with him. I'm mm -hmm. going to say, I'll go out with you guys mm -hmm. and see mm -hmm. what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mostly so if I, someone calls me. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Last Friday, I got lots of calls. I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were out. We, we've had six calls. You guys were out doing traffic control. Uh, we've been know? out six times since Friday. Right. Yeah. Where I've been out all. Yeah. I, I've only had four hours sleep per night for, since Thursday. Mm. So. Yeah. But tracking just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So these are just some, you know, this is going to be the new, I think you've seen this That's one. Yep. Yeah. This will be the new the logo insignia. on the door. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Of, you know, I think it disappointed me a little bit. Is I wished it, the picture of the church had been the South Woodbury Church. Right. And the, the original was, and that's a disappointment yeah. to me too. And, and who, actually who made it? Town. It was made by um, Always on Time Signs and Design. Okay. Can yes. you still change that? Because yeah, I would love to see that. Because we've always showcased used, uh, both of these buildings. Uh -huh. great, great big graphics we used for our stuff too. Yeah, I take can a, take I a can. picture of both of them. Send them. Because they can, they, they can printed stuff in. right off. They, they, I gave them like you see the patch on the side of our rescue truck. Yeah. They just scanned it. They came out perfect. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, I'd love to see the Southwood. Bridge. I'd love to see the Southwood Bridge Church too. It yeah. may be too late, but actually, um, uh, they printed it. Yeah, we're glad they printed they, these. They may have. Oh, okay. It. I don't really know. They haven't received them yet at the town garage, but I'll I'll call Greg um, first thing in the morning. Just to see, see yeah. if we can. Yeah, yeah, it would yeah. be nicer. Everybody would love it. Nice. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, um, it may be too late, but we like it. But, yeah, I like it anyway. Yeah. 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 So. It's kind of nice. It's, it was nice when the boys brought that to yep. us. Say, hey, right. other towns have got this on our truck. Yeah, no, ours I, got block letters. We got block Town letters. Yeah, yeah, I think right. it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. so a little pride in there. Yeah, yeah no, I think it was their initiative to, yeah. to, to, yeah, to have it. this happen. And, um, yeah. So um, and it was kind of based on the logo with the, the town letterhead, and I had yeah. done a drawing of it um, that they used. Um, but the, you know, obviously, the fellow designing put in a lot of kind of. You know, this is probably a template that they have in Something their, they add, in, yeah. their, in their thing. And so, so I was amazed things. at what they could print. They right. Could scan something in there and make beautiful. Right. Yeah. 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 And then, you Hold know, the printer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. It may be too late, um, mm -hmm. but we'll see. Um, and then as far as... Uh, the at the very same time, we're only getting, what, eight or ten of these things? No, right? I think they have enough to do up all of the... Vehicles. We've got three or four trucks, so you, greater, greater, the whole, the whole works. Okay, longer, so we're yeah. be getting 20 of them or something. We'll be, right? Yeah, beginning like yeah. 20 or so. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, mm -hmm. yeah, so hopefully it's not too late, but we'll see. Um, and then as far as the road, general road crew, you know, they definitely had a, um, a, mess a workout a last week. There's no way you're going to keep ahead of what we had. No, mm -hmm. no. And, and it was, when the roads are muddy, it's really hard to plow the snow. <coughs> yes. So, um, um, mm -hmm. But they're definitely, you know, kind of all of the equipment. Uh, there was just one minor, one of the shoes on one of the plows broke, um, but there was no real breakdown. So, you know, there's mm -hmm. always worry of this, the plows catching too much mud and, and uh, something yeah. breaking. Yeah. You know, but, you know, there was 
Yeah, the care plan. Yeah. The good boys yeah. most of the time. Yeah. So. Keep your speed down. Yeah. 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 Um, and they're, you know, definitely um, in, you know, ready for mud season. They've been Which hauling. Have, hauling should have it full force by Friday. We're supposed to get the 50s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the um, Bickford Quarry is open, so they've been hauling some gravel. Um, and getting ready. Stockpiling stuff. Yeah. Stockpiling stuff. Yeah, there's a pretty good pile there already, but they're mm -hmm. they're still piling uh, yeah. even more. And um, they've had some time to do quite a bit of catch up maintenance on on all of the equipment. Um, so their equipment and the crew are, seem to be in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're kind of hoping that there isn't any more snow. But we all are. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, as Wednesday, I'm going to Arizona. There won't be any snow there. Okay. Be there won't be any. Water. You better not be in any. I'm bringing, I'm bringing <laughs> a snowball so they can enjoy some. Yeah. 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 So that's that's pretty much it, I think, for that. So one thing I wondered if we couldn't have Greg do. Mm -hmm. um, there's a big pile of snow blocking up five or six of the parking spaces in the fire station. The I was okay. hoping he could come or Tim or have somebody go with the bucket loader. And, just right at the corner it. of Port Yeah, it's making a wicked mess there. there. We're having trouble getting the trucks out. Okay. There's people coming in and there's no place to park. If they could... Where could they push it to? Well, I think they could scoop it up and just dump it down toward the old dead pine tree behind the building. Right behind the put building. it on there and it'll okay. melt. Okay, so this is the corner by so the post office? On the post yeah. office. I, okay. I, I know they didn't push it up there, but it's right. creating a huge problem for parking. Yeah, the corner of Reddit 14. You Richard. can't see around, and, and what's happening is cars are coming in and parking crazy, and then when we have a fire call, and we have there's only four or five parking spaces total. Okay. I know Greg moved some of that, but not all it of needs to. He needs to clean that all the way to clean the curb. Okay. I would just scoop it all right up and just bring it down there, and then again, anything okay. you can clean around the island. Okay. Cause, uh, like the street where the highway plows, there's four or five parking spaces there scooping that out. You're going to take a few hours to do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I know it's going to melt, but it's probably going to be three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. And I know this, yeah. with, with all the calls we've been having, it's been a horror show trying yeah. to okay. get in and out of there. So that's something they could do in the next couple of days would be great if they... Okay. Uh, they just push it on top of the old store building over there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think they can just dump it. There's enough room down in back there. So we shouldn't have too much more plowing, I hope, this year. And you can just... Yeah. Yeah. Just scoop it up and put and it down just there. Drain off, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll call Greg in the morning. If he would, that would be awesome because yeah. that was a real mess, right? Yeah. Not that they caused it, but it's just I think the other. Yeah. Got to be a tough We may need there. to talk to 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 Robin about their plow person to sh mm -hmm. not plowing that. I don't know what they're doing, but there's that didn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Robin. I don't think Robin has anybody plowing there. Well, somebody in a black one ton does this. That one. So the post office side. Oh, right. Yeah, the, I think they're it's pushing. The, it's it's I, the I post office know. person. Yeah, yeah so we'll have to special. talk to about them next year to not, we've always historically pushed everything down. Back, yeah. and then at least the town can come with the loader and just scoop it by making that big pile. It's just been, I haven't yeah. pushed on it lately because it just, it was a frozen mass. It would be in a horror show, but I think yeah. things have softened up a little bit. Just, it would, wouldn't take too much work to clean that and to clean in front around the island in front of the, you know, because they, this, you'll see when he goes there. Yeah, yeah. I'm remembering that Greg asked me to, to check in with the post office about what they were doing there. Yeah, because that's creating problems for all of us. Normally, they used to always just push it out behind the post right, office. Right. This year, they piled it Yeah, it, makes a, makes a, yep. it uses up three yep. or four parking spaces. And then what happens, people start pulling in and just stopping. And then when we got to come in and out, the entrance has just gotten so narrow because of the snow around the island is yeah. mm -hmm. pushed out. Yeah. I think I... Yeah. I think I went down and... Because I was going to call him, but I figured since you were here, I'll let yeah, no, you call no, him. No, I'll do it. Yeah. Um, I think I remember talking to somebody who was working at the post office, and they didn't know who Yeah, because who was, it was plowing, and that's as far as they ever got. And somebody in a black one Oh, Brosho's wife. Okay. Yeah. And I know it's a lady in a black one time that I've seen, but I've never seen anyone pushing snow there, but someone's doing it. Yeah, she's one of the plows for the okay. post office. Okay, because they really just come in, plow straight down, and... Psh, so it's it's his wife, but if I got his number, then I could. Yeah, yeah, I can't okay. tell you what her yeah. name okay. is. Okay, all right, that's that's the best way I've had the, so far. Yeah, oh, I assume yeah, the, the, the muddy over. road complaints <laughs> will be <laughs> starting <laughs> soon, but I'll be yeah. on the first few days. Of I've seen her out there. We see her out there today, shoveling the steps off. So I know. Uh -huh. her. Yeah. Okay, all right, okay. Yeah. All right, that's it on um, the agenda here. I think for tonight. Perfect. Good. Uh, make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Right, good vote. No, but you're outvoted, so. <laughs> <laughs>